Faces dropped on a new edition of Soccer Down here. It's a Thursday. It's October 22nd. It is a Thursday thoughts edition of the show. You can use that hashtag and tweet your thoughts to us at Soccer Down here. You can tweet them to us at Longshoe or at OSG Nelson. You can email us, soccer down here at Gmail. You can also join us on the Twitch pitch, twitch.tv slash soccer down here. Uh, pretty much everything's fair game. We've got Champions League to discuss. We've got Copa Libertadores to discuss. Europa League starts today with the group stage. We've got a big Celtic and Milan match to discuss. Dundalk takes the field today in the group stage, and they needed to for a financial gain here, and we'll talk about what their chances are in the tournament. All of those stories, we've got Javier Aguirre talking about Major League Soccer, and some interesting things came out in an interview with Tom Marshall over at ESPN. All kinds of different things to get into. There's a list of MLS underrated players that uh, maybe they don't listen to this this program. I'm just saying. Uh, there's a bunch of players on that list that I feel like we've talked about a whole lot, and it'll get into a bigger conversation just about who is rated and who is underrated in Major League Soccer and who's not talked about enough and who just needs to be talked about more. We'll get into all of that. Um, anything else on your mind? Uh, John has something that he needs your help with, I think. Yeah, uh, okay. In the last seven months or so, I have started actually exercising for the first time in God knows how long. And it usually turns out to be about two miles a day, and it happens late in the afternoon um, just because... Hold on. I, I feel like we, we do this every time you go on a, a story. What? Um, you're exercising, and it's two miles a day. Yeah. Um. You probably need to explain how you are exercising because you could do that in so many different ways. I'm not even going to try to explain it. It, it, It's called explaining things for the audience. (laughs) Tell them how you are exercising, sir. I leave the house and I walk a circuit, which is the leaving the house part. I don't care about You walk. Okay. Thank you. That was the whole important part here. You could have been swimming. You could have been biking. You could have been on a treadmill. You could have been on a stairmaster. You could have been on an exercise bike. You could have been on a million things. You could have bear crawled. Master going to fit in this off there. You have plenty of room for a stairmaster. If I have room for an exercise bike in my apartment, you have room for a stairmaster in your house. Anyway, proceed. I leave the house, and I walk Thank two you. miles. I try to make it two miles a day, but since football season has started, it's a little difficult. Anyway, comes out to about a minimum of eight to ten miles a week. And at night, because of all of this walking, I have started to get those cramps that you get in your calf muscles. And it's been more frequent now that I've started walking than it was before I started walking. And I'm soliciting assistance to make sure that that doesn't happen in the middle of the night and I'm not screaming my head off trying to flex and extend my calf. (laughs) Again, more explanation here. This is not just happening in the evening, which is after the sun goes down. This is happening after you go to sleep. Yes. And you are waking up with cramps. Explanation. It's a key part of radio, John. Let's, Let's continue. So... I'm just trying to keep from awakening in the middle of the night with the most nasty, painful calf cramps known to mankind. I have seen pills that you can allegedly take that will quell this. But Jason has suggested having more bananas in my diet over the the multivitamin that I take every day. No, not over, in addition to. Well, in addition to. Don't stop taking the multivitamin because it, it helps for multiple reasons. That's why it's a multivitamin. Multivitamin, yes. Uh, but you. yes, bananas do help with cramping. That's that's something that has worked for me in the past. I think that's a, a safe recommendation. Um, we are looking for others now that you have all the information. There are a couple questions from the Twitch pitch. They, they need for some sure. further explanation. Um, let's see. Uh do you use a thigh master? No, I do not, but I have the uh, the physical uh, therapy uh, muscle gun. I have one of those. You have a physical therapy muscle gun? You know, you know the the 
I could go get it, but no, that would don't. Be, we don't have a commercial break for me to go get it. No. So, no, it's just it's one of those uh, guns that physical therapists use, and they apply it directly to the muscle, and you turn the the gun on, and it's supposed to massage it. I so asked like you a, about something that is to exercise, and, and you're telling me about therapeutic things. Yeah. That, that, that's so, that's like asking thi- you about something to eat, and you start telling me about something you planted in the backyard. Do you have thi- a thigh? Do you know what a thigh master is? Yeah, Suzanne Summers. I remember that. And you do not have one. No. Why you got to be like that about Suzanne Summers gimmick? All right. Anyway, uh, hey, she do you- made like eleven billion dollars from it. Good for her. Do you have uh, your ankle weights and leggings? Uh, no, I do not have leggings. I'm sure we have ankle weights in here somewhere. I do not use them. Uh, have you used a shake weight? Many moons ago, and I'm sure it still exists somewhere in this house. Wow, you did use a shake weight. I would. Oh, oh yeah, it was, uh, just uh, the. I don't know if I would have admitted that one. In a heartbeat, I'll admit that. Uh, are you pumping your arms properly when you are walking? Yeah. Are you Are you doing sh- that? Are Are they going up that high? I don't know. If, well. I'm trying to think. So uh, you're trying to uh, think about uh, walking. Uh, well, no, I'm trying to think about my stride when I walk. If I'm yeah, if I'm not uh, trying to program my mobile device to where I can listen to something, yeah, it's usually about this high. You probably get that sorted out by the time you get back to the the house, right? Pretty much. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, have you used the Richard Simmons workout tapes? No. Wow. Okay. Are you stretching? This is probably a good question from J-Dub. Are you stretching before and after walking? No. Are you st- Especially your calf. If you're, no. you're having calf issues, you probably need to stretch your calves before and after walking. Okay, that's a good point. I like that. Thank you, no, J-Dub. I... Uh, have you tried the sauna suit? What the hell's a sauna suit? I think I know what that one is. I mean, I, I'm getting the basic gist of the sauna suit. From I would, assume, I would assume that I know what that might be, but I do not. Uh, Chris Ashley says you need more sodium to prevent your cramping. <laughs> of course. Uh, bananas from Piscine. Sweet potatoes from Happiest no, of Joes. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> not, a sweet, not a sweet potato guy. You're not a sweet potato guy. No. Uh, how did I not know this one? Um what do you have against sweet potatoes, John? The taste. They're not sweet. Um, it, and it's just no. I've never... You don't like the name because they say sweet potatoes and they're not sweet enough for you? Yes, exactly. That's exactly Well, that's what it. you just said. So why do you... They're, what's the deal? To me, it's... it's you know, Patty likes sweet potatoes. I don't. I've just never... I've just never liked them. Wow. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. I'm, I'm still kind of surprised. Um Potassium helps, and that's where the bananas can come in. Yes, bananas, right. Uh, Mustard, bananas, pickle juice are all different things. um, Okay, because I I eat pickles, and I've been having more pickles with my sandwiches lately. Well, maybe you need to drink the pickle juice. And I usually, and do you remember the old uh, the old adage? If you were a pitcher, that you'd soak your elbow in pickle brine to to toughen up. (laughs) No, I don't know that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nolan Ryan used to do that. He had and. He toughen up his uh, ligaments in his elbow by stuffing his uh, arm in pickle brine. I I don't know. Um, uh, Katie says um, her dad gets these. Tried lots of things. It's also a side effect from some medications. In case you've changed anything lately, along with your walking. Um, Joe suggests the power walking. Make sure you get that one right. Yeah, uh, Tafka says you're extra slappy today. I'm extra slappy. I don't think you're extra slappy. I'm I'm really trying to hold back, Tafka, because this is why, just there there's so you, much to jump on here. Why and I'm are you just, holding back? No, I'm just I'm I'm letting you bury yourself because it's just so easy right now. I'm just gonna sit here and chill. I'm 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 less slappy than normal, Tafka. That's what I'm saying. I mean it's you're you're gonna let me continue to No, it's more dis- fun this way. I, but that's what I'm saying. But I don't I don't view you holding back as I don't I mean, come on, ask away. I don't care. Oh, I, I, I guess where I'm being slappy is I'm asking for explanation for the audience to know what you're talking uh, about. So oh, that. that's oh. being a little slappy, I guess. I'm just trying Whatever. to make sure people understand the conversation. Ah. Yeah, um, I don't think that is extra slappy. Tesco says, I exercise for an hour plus every morning, and the key is more water, John. You have to drink more water. That could be. You have to stay hydrated. Yeah, 
I do have water here on the premises, but most of the water that I drink is carbonated. I will stipulate to that. Uh, KFC loves sweet potatoes. I do too, KFC. I, I've, Kef- I've really... You and KFC can have mine. I've got plenty, actually. Um, I just stocked up on sweet potatoes. I enjoy the sweet potatoes. Uh, J-Dub, have a glass of water before you go to bed. People tend to get super dehydrated while they sleep, and that could cause muscle cramps. Okay. J-Dub with the, the wind today. All kinds okay. of good things. Yeah, because because uh, the boss has the water by her bedside, and so she usually will do that before she goes to bed. So I could see that she doesn't have uh, those cramps, and I do. See, there you go. Christopher Abel's with you on the sweet potatoes. Hates them. Um, Mizano says sweet potatoes are better than pumpkin anything. I like both. I'm not, I don't want to have to choose Mizano. No. Don't I, like either. I don't want to have to choose. Uh, Christopher Abel says, I'm sitting back in my 541 and hitting on the counter attack. You're doing a bad job of keeping possession. <laughs> That's accurate, Chris. That's very accurate. A couple little jabs early, and then, you know, I'm going to sit back and look for the counter opportunities. There you go. Um, <laughs> burned. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole long ride up on leg cramps at night by the Cleveland Clinic. Basically, it's just age. Sorry, John. That's I, I won't uh, dispute that. The I, I'm I'm giving the out here because when I when I was playing regularly, um, I would get these occasionally. It was occasional. It was never a regular thing. But that waking up in the middle of the night with a severe calf cramp that's what i would get it would feel like my calf muscle was like peeling off of my leg exploding, and it would wake yeah. me up um yep. it wasn't exp- it didn't feel exploding to me like it really felt like it was peeling and it oh, wow. was the worst pain ever it is um i would get it just occasionally um and i've gotten older and i'm not playing it like i used to thanks to a concussion um and i haven't gotten them in a while uh Man, it's been a long time since I've had one. Maybe I need to work out more. I definitely need to work out more. Um, okay, Domer suggests uh, roasted balsamic glazed sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts. And that is excellent, Domer. I I can no. fully support that. No, can't go there. Uh, do you not like Brussels sprouts either? Nope. Okay, I'm not a surprise. Um, are there vegetables you like? Uh, on the record or off the record? Well, considering there's people listening, I would say it's on the record. Uh, no. There are no vegetables you like? On the record, no. None. I will, I will deny liking any vegetable on the record. Why? why off the would... record's an entirely different story, but on the record, uh, I, I will not stipulate to liking anything green. I don't even understand the on the record or the off the record portion. Okay, of fine. I like broccoli. I like carrots. What's wrong with uh, that? Why do you see. act like that's something wrong? Are you eight? Like, little kids aren't supposed to say they like vegetables. Like, you're more than eight. I like broccoli. Broccoli's good. Yeah, broccoli uh, Broccoli, I will eat, and no, I don't put salt on it there either. Um, carrots I will have. Um, if cauliflower is a part of the medley, then I'll suffer through it. Yeah, not a fan of cauliflower. Uh, green beans, uh, I'll dig. Um, and... Uh, the boss does something really good with uh, bacon and bacon is uh, not a vegetable, John. <laughs> no, 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 no. But no, but the, it's a, a part of the, the the cooking process where the the, the bacon flavor goes into the. <laughs> it's the called mix. the bacon fat. No, well, no, it's not the fat. It's actually uh, the actual uh, slices that are okay. put, put into it. And there's like a, I, I forget what she does with that. It's like uh, vinegar. And bacon, and there's something. There's a there's a sweetener that she puts into it. I'm waiting for well. the vegetable at some point. Well, no, just the no. It's the, with the green beans is what I'm saying. There so, you go. Okay, that was, no. the, that was the whole part because we were talking vegetables and you're talking. Well, about no, and bacon. I was talking green beans, and I said that there's something special that the boss does with the sauce that that uh, that helps out there. She puts bacon on top of it. Yeah. Okay. That's not a sauce, but all right. No, 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 but no. The, the juice from the bacon, and then there's uh, there's a. <laughs> it's not a marinade, but it's. Uh, I'll have to ask her what the sauce is that that's part of the the natural uh, juices that are applied in the in the bowl. But uh, but yeah, there's something that she does. Okay, so what does Patty do with green beans? I'll have to ask her about that. 
bacon juice. What the hell ever you call it? <laughs> bacon juice. Okay. <laughs> So fine that goes that goes with the muffins and everything <sighs> the gamey muffins and bacon juice. There you go, Russo. It, it's there for you. Bacon juice. Just I, uh, I got nothing. Uh, Jason Heinley says that sweet potatoes are better than pumpkins. I like both. I don't want to have to choose. Um, you can have mine. I eat sweet potatoes more than pumpkins. That's because I, I like pumpkins probably around this time of the year the best. But uh, no, I like sweet potatoes a little bit better. But I like both. Um. Sauce, I think, was the word that I was looking for. Not bacon juice, but the sauce. He used both, and and neither one is accurate because it's it's the bacon fat. It comes off the bacon. It's not a marinade. It's definitely... Um, yeah. Bacon juice on a t-shirt. That's what's going to (laughs) happen. Jeez. Uh... I think I've got everything. I'm still baffled. Uh, Chris Ashley says, We had Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes last night, and my 19-month-old ate all the sweet potatoes. She loved them. The Brussels sprouts, on the other hand. Uh. Chris, you can have mine. Jason, you can have mine. Ay, Dios mío. Um, yeah. So, uh, John's food takes are about as bad as Real Madrid played in the first half yesterday. I was going to ask if you want now, is uh, over your shoulder, for those who are watching on Twitch, mm-hmm. is, is your Azizu, is that in black? Is that written in black marker? Yes. Okay. Um, because I didn't know if, I, if that was for a certain uh, flavor of helicopter theory that could be attached with any future no. losses or if you wanted no, to go. No, that's not a helicopter theory. That's a fact. <laughs> he, he's lost in the league. He, he's lost to Shakhtar, who was missing uh, half of their team due to COVID-19. And now he plays at Barcelona this week. Um, and then next week, because the Champions League is never ending at this point, yep. then he goes to, uh, where did they Where's go? Where's Gladbach? Yeah, they go to Mönchengladbach on Tuesday. Um, if they lose both of those, uh, it's not a black helicopter theory. It's a hot seat and he might not be back. Um, it's, it's very strange. Joe boss says on the record, your food takes are very odd, which is a very nice way to put it, Joe. I, I think that's very oh, kind oh, of you. Jason Heinley. It's the bacon grease. The, the grease is, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Jason Nix Bacon was in this juice. morning and he says, if Real Madrid loses by blank goals in the Classico, Zidane is gone. Is he losing his job in 2020? Uh, if they keep losing, he loses his job in 2020. There's there's no question. Um, I don't think they fire him after the Classico on Saturday because they play again on Tuesday. That's what might help him at this point is that the games just keep coming. If he loses to Barca and he loses to Munch and Gladbach, and both are on the road, um, he might not make it to next weekend. That's that's real. Um, they were horrible early on. Yep. Uh, Shakhtar was missing 10 players due to injuries in COVID-19. Uh, they took a 3-0 lead um, early. I mean, just craziness. Real Madrid did fight back into it. Luka Modric with a great goal. Uh, Vinicius with just a horrible giveaway. It got to 3-2. They thought they had an equalizer. Um, shots deflected, it's ruled offside, Vinicius was blocking the vision of the goalkeeper, it was accurate, it wasn't a Daniel Royer situation, although Vinicius might have been watching Daniel Royer to try to get some tips. Next time you have to stand further off to the side, so you're not actually blocking the vision of the goalkeeper, just to where he has to wait to see if it deflects off of you. Pay attention, Vinicius, and you'll be able to pick up the Red Bull's dirty tricks. Um, It didn't work, so Real Madrid loses. Zidane said they they looked short of confidence. Um, He took the blame, which is the right thing to do. Uh, They go to Barca. They go to Mönchengladbach Saturday, Tuesday. Now the Champions League group is is a little complicated with where things stand. Also, Madrid did what they called in the offseason Operación Salida, the Operation Exit. 16 players were let go. Nobody came in. Two reasons. Um, one, I think they're they're stacking up chips to go get Kylian Mbappe next year. Uh, maybe as soon as January if things get really crazy. And he is reluctant to sign a new deal in Paris probably because of this. So that's one reason. 
The other reason is they uh, they suffered a drop of 150 million euro in revenue because of COVID-19. And they sold it as a way to stay financially sound. And it was also a shot at Barcelona, who is not financially sound. Um, they said they could do that and they wouldn't lose any competitiveness. Well, uh-huh. uh, now you have to be concerned about that. And how do they fix it? And, you know, for Zidane, who had the incredible run with three straight Champions Leagues, walked away, came back into a mess, fixed it, won a league title. Um, the leash is, is already short because that's Spanish football. You know, you, you have a couple of bad results go your way, and this is what happens. You're already on the hot seat. If they drop these next two games or even a, a loss and a draw in these next two games – he might not make it to next weekend. I was trying to look and see who of the 10 players for Shakhtar were not available. It included Piatov, their longtime goalkeeper. He has been a stalwart for them forever. And Brazilian stars, Taysan, Alan Patrick, and Junior Marias. I mean, and that is, that's a lot of heavyweights right there just in those four names. And I will, I will admit that... You start watching this one, you're like, okay. Uh, and uh, once again, I will stipulate. All right, you know the uh, the competition that ESPN has, uh, you know, the street competition yeah. where you try to get as many wins in a row. Yeah. Yesterday, one of their choices was Real Madrid wins by two goals or more, mm-hmm. or Shakhtar loses by one, draws or wins outright. The instant that I saw that 10 players, including Piatov, Taysan, Alan Patrick, Junior Marias, were not a part of the roster and that they only had the 13 guys, I immediately switched my pick from Bayern to win outright to Real Madrid winning by two or more. <laughs> exactly. Good times. It was. My seven-game win streak went... <laughs> that. Uh, we already have this trending in the uh, the chat. <laughs> it's because uh, Mizano saying cue the helicopters, Zizu to Atlanta United. Ah, um, eh, I don't. One, I don't think he'd ever do it. Um, he's only going to go somewhere where he's got talent upon talent upon talent. Um, MLS, you don't have that. It's it's far more of a, a give and take. It's far more balanced. You're, you're not going to have that. Even at Atlanta, even at LAFC, you're not going to have demonstrably better talent than the rest of the league. Um, I don't think he would be interested in potentially exposing himself like that because the criticism on Zidane has always been tactics. Uh, great man manager, but tactically, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of simple. It's kind of there. I mean, even the Champions League runs, it was kind of like, well, I mean, it's nothing like really blowing your mind here with the tactics. Uh, but Real Madrid's had the most talent, so they've won more often than, than not. And I don't think he's going to go somewhere where he could get exposed. Yeah, yeah, and that that to me, that's, that's my vibe on it, too. Uh, I, I understand the idea of wanting to go pursue a challenge, but I've just always thought of Zinedine Zidane as someone who is going to be a European manager. No, I don't care about that. I, I think those days are gone where somebody, I'm a European manager. I would never look at Major League Soccer. No, I don't, there's still a few of them. That, those days are pretty much gone. I'm not concerned about that. Javier Aguirre would, would definitely disagree with you, and we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, I just don't see Zidane going into that situation because he'll have his pick of teams with all the talent. Um, I mean, I could see Zidane going to PSG and winning league title after league title after league title after league title and trying to compete at the next level. I could see him doing that because it's no risk for him. You know, there, there's very little risk. Real Madrid right now, risk has been brought into the equation because they're not as deep as they used to be. And this is where you're at. Um, okay, Burned chimes in. Oh, first, uh, Johannes says, never change from Bayern winning outright. It's the easiest guarantee in Europe right now. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't kidding. Yeah, that's that's a definite. Uh, Burned says, so about that Aronson transfer to Red Bull Salzburg, he may only be playing in the Austrian Bundesliga in the spring, which is worse than MLS uh, in terms of quality. 
Also, it's harder to make Europa League round of 16 as a third place out of a tough Champions League group than through Europa League groups. It's not a, a good fit for, for Jesse. It's not good for Jesse Marsh in general. And they had a draw yesterday. Um, struggled a bit. I mean, yeah. it's still it's game one of six in, in the group stage. The, the hard part is going to be you're playing these six games over eight weeks, and the only weeks you're not playing are, are for the November international break. So over the next eight weeks, you got the international break you can put to the side. But outside of that, you're playing weekend, midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend, midweek, through the end of the Champions League groups. Um, how are you going to balance that stuff? I mean, the good thing for a Red Bull Salzburg is their league is rather weak. So maybe he has to rest people a lot in domestic play to try to get through this Champions League group. That's my guess. Other teams aren't going to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, you've got Manchester City right now, and, and Pep Guardiola's like, uh, last man standing gets to play, basically. Uh, Fernandinho's now out for an extended period of time. It's like, uh, I don't care if you're good enough at this point. Can you stand and can you run? And yes, you can kick a ball straight. Yes, your leg's not broken. Okay, you're playing. You're starting. Oh, you've never played right back before? I don't care. You're playing it. That's all we got. Like, that's what's going to happen here. And that's that's Manchester City at the beginning of this step. Uh, Liverpool didn't really look great yesterday. And I'm, I'm trying not to pick on Liverpool every day. It's just it's, it's fun sometimes because like Jurgen Klopp's just a, a, good, uh, a good target at times when he wants to fight everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't look great. Against Ajax, I mean, they were a little fortunate. It was an own goal. Um, Taliafico turns it into his own net in 35th. Ajax had good chances. I think they hit the bar at least once. But Liverpool gets it done, and that's a good clean sheet for them without Virgil van Dijk. Bayern 4-0 just dominated Atleti. Uh, The goal from Coman um, on the run was absurd. Uh I mean, you take your pick at Golasso's on that one. Uh, Hansi Flick said, our game was just good tonight. It was a tough task, but we mastered it. Our efficiency was good today, and I'm very satisfied. It's very important to win that first game. Uh, Inter did not. They had a 2-2 draw. Um, and Antonio Conte said that it was really tough for them psychologically to lose uh, Hakimi four hours before the start of the game due to a positive COVID-19 test. Um, He said it certainly wasn't easy today to receive the news at 5 o'clock that Hakimi was positive. He had been training with us until this morning. He was due to play. We had prepared some tactical situations with him. Those things unsettle a group, and they looked unsettled. It was 2-2 for them against Mönchengladbach. Uh, Anything else stand out to you in Champions League yesterday? Uh, Looking at the just reinforcing the juice box numbers real quick, Mm -hmm. Uh, Salzburg going into their game against Lokomotiv was a minus 345. The draw was a plus 520. And uh, just reinforcing once again, if I can find it quickly here and put it on camera, right there, the miners, right there, my miners. Uh, Shakhtar going into the game yesterday finished on average about a plus 1420 to win. With all of the absences, Real Madrid was a minus 526. But no, with with uh, Champions League yesterday, I was just stunned that uh, Real goes down 3 nothing the way that they did. Completely there. I mean, to me, it's just like every time I would look up, they were being beaten in transition, beaten on the counter again and again and again, coming back down from the left-hand side of the screen to the right. You're just seeing all these orange jerseys going off to the right. Uh, Atalanta puts up four on Midtieland. But, yeah, uh, you mentioned Manchester City and the loss of uh, Fernandinho. That's going to be interesting for Manchester City and Premier League play. And uh, so those were the highlight. The highlight for me, obviously, was Shakhtar with the, the win over Real Madrid. And, obviously, the questions with Zidane heading into this weekend and next week. But, uh, yeah. That's the best way I can describe Real Madrid yesterday. Why is uh, Shakhtar... Um, called the Miners. You want to tell us the story? Uh, I'd have to look it up, but I would think that that particular part of the Ukraine is a heavy mining uh, that's district. A, that's a safe uh, assumption. <laughs> I didn't know if there was anything more to it. Not really. Or anything no, specifically I mean, was, they were mining. So just, just checking. Uh, I know, but now, now I'm going to look it up, and then I'll come up with an answer in about 35 minutes when Mike's on with us. Yeah, it sounds about right. 
Um, Ricky Ricardo with bad news if you have Hulu. Uh, Hulu and Sinclair have now dissolved their agreement, and there are zero Give streaming services that will have Fox Sports South Southeast as of tomorrow. Give it time. If you can't watch a game, you can't watch a game. What does give it time mean? No, but in the sense of, I mean, I'm not, I'm taking the, the games aside, but there, there will be a moment, whenever that moment is, that Sinclair will sit there and realize that they need stadium on their, uh, on any visible platform to be stadium Southeast. And this is where I think it's heading. I, I think that eventually you're going to see Fox Sports regionals rebranded into stadium. Yeah, because they're not Fox regionals. anymore. So, I mean, right. that's something I think confuses people. Uh, just, yeah. They just have the name, the, the branding still, but they're not anything to do with Fox anymore. Right, and so I think that Sinclair is going to want stadium to have as much exposure in a linear sense as possible. So they're going to – they eventually will – have that negotiation turn and you eventually will see it. No, that doesn't help folks who want to watch things right now, whether it's college football or Atlanta United or what have you. But yeah, but they don't think- have enough time to, to play these silly games. I mean, that's the thing is uh, there are streaming services that have Fox Sports South, Southeast Ricky, uh, AT&T TV does. Um, and it's a streaming service. I, that's what I have. Uh, I had UVerse. They're starting to get rid of UVerse. So I went ahead and switched over to AT&T TV because they had a good deal to do that. It is a streaming service. It's been really good. They, they do have uh, Fox Sports South and Southeast on that. So um, that's one. Uh, it's, it's a little more expensive than your Hulus and your YouTube TVs, though. Um, they're trying to kind of fill the in-between section between the total streaming and cable type of service. So... Uh, but it is streaming, and you can't get that. They have it. That's the only one I know of at this point. Yeah, uh, and to answer your question, it was coal mining back in the 1930s. Coal mining, there we go. That's all I was looking for. Yeah. Um, burned about Salzburg yesterday. Says that was the biggest game in the group stage for them. They had to beat Moscow at home to come in third. Now it will be tough. Um, Christopher Abel says Salzburg can just go to Bayern and win 3-1, right? Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I'm not ruling out anything with Salzburg and Atleti though I I was worried about Atleti last year then you had the the Champions League win over Liverpool but it it feels like there's cracks with Diego Simeone and and Atleti like there's only so much further they can go they do get Luis Suarez which helps paper over those cracks to a degree but Salzburg I mean but Bayern exposed it I think Salzburg can expose Atleti in some ways um I'm not throwing those games out just yet um what else we got on Champions League and Fox Sports South um uh, Matt, no, the Fox Sports app, if your service doesn't have yeah, the... Yeah, won't trigger it. Yeah, you won't trigger it, because you have to, the Fox Sports app, you have to have some service that is a subscription to Fox Sports South or Fox Sports Southeast. Um, that's the only still connection. Um, Christopher Abel, yes, there is 92.9 uh, for the game, and we Why, will yes. be there for you, um, but that's not... How we want to be there for you. We want to be there for you because you like radio and you like that that opportunity. Um, yes, you can watch on Fox Sports Go if you have that cable or satellite subscription. But if you don't, you don't. Um, let's see here. Uh, Burns with me on on Salzburg and Atleti. I, I think that's where they could pull some points. I really do. Uh, let's see. So Dish doesn't have... Fox Sports South or Southeast either. Um, and yeah, then there's the difference between Fox Sports Go and Fox Sports. The Fox Sports app and Fox Sports Go is for the regionals because that's, again, part of the separation between Fox and the former Fox Sports networks that are no yeah. longer affiliated with Fox but still have the name Fox. Yeah, All the confusion. That's, to- that's tons of fun. Uh, Fubo, do they have it? I do not know. Um, Xfinity does, and you're, you're Cable services do. I know Uverse does. Um, if you can still get it, a Direct TV, I'm pretty sure it does. Don't know if Fubo does. That's one I'm not sure on. Efforting. Um, okay, pe- many people are efforting here. Just to give everybody the the full amount of options. And good morning, Percy. How are you? Good morning, Percy. So AT and T TV, I know does. That's the only one that I know because that's what I have. Um, 
we'll figure this out. We'll try to come up with a list of all the possibilities for it and, and see what we can do here. Yeah, it's probably easier to list those that have them rather than those that don't. That is true. Soccer for good, OG. Uh, looking ahead in Champions League. So some news this morning about Cristiano Ronaldo and Juventus. He tested positive again for coronavirus. So according to the UEFA rules as they are currently written, he will miss next week's game with Barcelona and Lionel Messi. Uh, he'll also miss this weekend in, in Serie A. Now they are trying to fight this because, reportedly, the viral load in this last test was very low. So they are asking UEFA to allow a follow-up test 48 hours prior to the match. That's not, from what I've read, uh, acceptable in the UEFA protocols. But we're talking about Cristiano Ronaldo. We're talking about a Messi-Ronaldo match. And maybe some rules are bent. If Nick Saban can get rules bent and he can get nasal swabs put onto a private plane to get tested in time so he can get on the sideline, I think Cristiano Ronaldo would probably try to pull those things. Yeah. Just saying. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, there, there will. I think that there will. You uh, pick a string, find it, that's going to get pulled to make sure. That uh, if, if there's a string to be pulled, if there's a way to pull it and... From what I've read, there's not, according to the guidelines. You had to test a week ahead of time, and if you were positive, you weren't going to be able to play in UEFA competition the following week. Um, we'll see. We'll see how they handle this. It is Ronaldo, and if they're going to change a rule, which I think is what they'd have to do, it's not about a string. It's about rewriting a rule midstream. Yeah. They'd do that for a old Cristiano. Mm-hmm does not appear that on any of the add-ons for Fubo TV, including sports packages, that you can get any of the regional uh, named Fox Sports Networks. You can get Stadium 1, 2, and 3, but you cannot get any of the Fox RSNs as we know them. Okay. Uh, Mizano said um, they did this with some other networks last year. Whenever there was something going on, it might be a week, but I think they'll renegotiate and it'll come back. I wonder with what John was saying if, Part of this process is to rebrand them and come back as Stadium South or Stadium Southeast or whatever um, as part of this whole thing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a real pain to be doing this right now. They tried to avoid it during the baseball season. They did. They wanted to get around those, but they don't really care too much about MLS and, and that ability to watch these games, or I guess some college football as well. They were more worried about the baseball side of it, and this is where you're stuck at the moment as they play hardball, and it's very, very frustrating. Um, Jared underscore Smith wants to put FF, FSS on rabbit ears. Yeah. That's old school. That's not happening. That is old school. Sorry. And then be on like digital TVs and point ones and things like that where you could get uh, France 24 and all the shopping networks on digital TV. Yeah, something like that. Uh, sorry, Jason Nix. I was talking about specifics with uh, scientific testing about Cristiano Ronaldo's viral load. Viral load. Don't take <laughs> things out of context. Sir. Um, J-Dub, you can stop with your roll tides. Uh, you, yeah, you were really? winning the early yeah. part of the show, not anymore. You, you're, you're back in the power rankings. You've slid down the list. Yeah, just don't want to talk he, about he that. He and Domer should have a discussion. Yeah, don't want to talk about that right now. Don't want to talk about that at all. Um, okay, so lots of different things. Jesse Marsh talking about Salzburg. He's come out and he said they're playing for third place in a Europa League spot. It's what's realistic according to their budget. Uh, they've been to the Europa League semifinals in, uh, twice in the last five years. That's where they think they can get. I think they can get some points off at Leti to make up for, for this with Moscow. I just think these games are going to get weird. Um, yeah. I think the, the teams that are in more competitive leagues will really suffer at the end of the Champions League group stage. And a team like a Salzburg, some of these smaller teams, might be able to take advantage of that if they rest players in their domestic league and come into the Champions League games fresher, you're going to get bonkers results by the time you get to uh, mid to late November and these last group stage games. Because you're going to have some teams that are just walking wounded. 
Um, not even getting into potential positives with, with coronavirus and absences. Yeah. I'm just talking about injuries piling up because of all these games. Yep. You're going to have things get really crazy with it, really crazy with it. Now, I think a team like Salzburg, a team like Shakhtar, teams like that can take advantage of those situations, and you're going to see some heavy hitters miss out on the knockout rounds in the Champions League because of it. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to watch. I would not be putting Halloween candy or, or juice boxes on much of this. No. Just because of how ridiculous it'll be. I mean, we'll still have some fun with it. Don't don't worry. But it's going to get really, really odd. Really, really strange. 24 matches in Europa League today. Yeah, uh, because it is the kickoff of the Europa League. What are you excited about in the Europa League? Oh, wow. Uh, I'm excited looking at everybody else, considering I was staring at Shakhtar yesterday. I mean, you look at, uh, I know that uh, Dundalk, I know that the Colonel is, is locked into Dundalk, who has now gone to almost a plus 500 at home, going up against Molda, who is a minus 179. Give me the circus peanuts on Dundalk. Yeah, really? Because I'm not worried if I lose the circus peanuts. Those things are gross. Yep, Arsenal's a minus 167, and these are 1255 kicks. Arsenal's a minus 167 against Rapid VN. Uh, Rapid VN is a plus 430, basically. Hmm. Rangers is a plus 110 going up against Standard Liège. Uh, uh, where is that one? It's kind of important to say where they're being played. It's at, it's at Standard Liège. Okay. Rangers on the road is a plus now 108. Uh, uh, Celtic at home against AC Milan. This is one at three o'clock that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Celtic a plus three hundred at home. AC Milan a minus one hundred nine on the road. Celtic was horrible against Rangers. Like normally, yep. you give me that number, I'm going to take Celtic to pull an upset or pull the draw. They were awful against Rangers. Awful. Jared underscore Smith. Awful. Yep, and he'll stipulate to that too. They were bad, and mm-hmm. I don't think they're going to fix it all before uh, Milan shows up. In Scotland today, a beating. Yeah, yeah. That's what's in Scotland today. Milan uh, by two or more goals. Leicester at King Power is hosting Zoya Luhansk. Leicester is a minus three fifty-seven. Uh, Zoya Luhansk is almost the plus eleven hundred in that one. So I would say circus peanuts on Zoya Luhansk. Why? Uh, Pesky Ukrainian side going to Leicester. Pesky Ukrainian side. Uh-huh. Uh, what is their track record? What do you know about this pesky Ukrainian side? The, in, in Europa League, uh, Luhansk has come of age last couple of years in the Ukrainian Premier League. They've been uh, a contender uh, for this uh, Europa League spot. But uh, I think that, as you, as you mentioned, I think that this could be a situation where uh, Luhansk side that has improved uh, in Europe over the last handful of years, I think that something could happen here. Uh, I, I, I would, I would put circus peanuts on a plus eleven hundred. Um, yeah, I'm tempted. I'll tell you why. They're, uh, I'm looking back at their history just a little bit because this is a club I am not all that familiar with. They were founded in 1923. Um, they were the first provincial Soviet club to win the Soviet Top League title in 1972. Uh, they consider the factory team that founded in 23 as their predecessor. Their nickname is the uh, Musiki, M U Z H Y K Y. Okay. Would you pronounce that Musiki? Yeah, I would. That is the men. They are the men. The men, okay. Well, good on you. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, I will. I will not go circus peanuts on it because I've already thrown my circus peanuts somewhere else. I will go with the. Um, which ones am I going to go with? I'll go with those stupid generic peanut butter things that aren't really good. The okay, like the the brown uh, and orange the, the, kind uh, of things. No, those are the ones I'm going with. You can pick whatever you want for your things. Well, no, I, already I got did, it. Like I said, I did. Circus I already got peanuts it. On, sorry, Luhan. I got it. All right, fine, you got it. Uh, then the other one on the board, Tottenham at home against Lusk at 3 o'clock. Tottenham is a minus 385. Lusk is a plus 930. Uh, I'm not up on where uh, Lusk is these days, but Jose Mourinho is saying uh, don't talk about being so spursy. Yep. He's saying the so, uh, giving up a 3-0 lead had nothing to do with being spursy, and he doesn't want talk about being spursy. Yeah, and uh, he posted a fun picture on his Instagram account. 
Oh, he did. What did he have to with, say? Did he did with, he say anything about bullets for the Austrians, like uh, our manager at Peñarol? That would be a no. Yeah, I don't think Jose is going to pull that. No, 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 no. But uh, on his Instagram account, which I might even start following, uh, he had a picture of himself with three balls. He had three balls. He was holding three balls. Okay. And uh, from our friends at NBC Sports, once the ad gets off the page, and I could actually try to, to dredge this thing up, and I could tell you what Jose said, which was actually pretty funny. Uh, let's see. Pro Soccer Talk. Let's see. Clop on bit. No! What? It's like it's just it's spinning and going like nine different directions. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want. I want the Jose Mourinho. He, and it's here's, garbage! Here's, it is. Here's, and here's the title. Nick Mendola, friend of the show. Jose Mourinho wins Instagram ahead of Europa League. Okay. So here's what he said. Three balls. The three goals we conceded against West Ham. The three amazing goals we scored against them are the two Europa Leagues I have in the pocket and the third one I am ready to fight for. Ah, he's playing that gimmick again. Yes, three. Okay. Um, I mean, they should beat Lusk, uh, although there is a good piece over at BreakingTheLines.com about the uh, rise of Lusk and the club that never gave up. So BreakingTheLines.com, they'll go deep into some different things. Um came out last week uh, just a little bit of a profile if you're looking for the history on uh, Lusk ahead of that match. Is that one of the three o'clocks? Yes, that is one of the three o'clocks. Okay, so you've got time. Uh, yeah. What are the numbers on Hoffenheim? Uh, Hoffenheim. So they're trying to become my German club. Okay. Uh, are they a, a 12? Okay, here we go. Against uh, Shervana Jevesda at three o'clock. Hoffenheim is a minus 172. Uh, Shervana Zervezda is a plus 475, and your draw is a plus 328. Okay. Are there any really stupid numbers in the Europa League? Uh, other than our boys at Zoya Luhans? Yeah, that's the, the dumbest number we've heard so far. Uh, close second is our boys at AZ Alkmaar, who are going to Napoli. Okay. And, and AZ Alkmaar is a plus 1067. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Napoli's a minus 385. Give me those really generic, nasty-tasting, butterscotch, not Werther's original candies wrapped in the wax paper. Why don't you just throw them in the trash instead of putting them on uh, AZ here? Because Napoli's going to dominate. Because Gattuso's going to stab somebody with a fork if they don't. (laughs) Uh, Napoli was amazing on the weekend. Um, I don't think that slips up here. Not Napoli wins. Hmm. Chucky, Chucky Lozano. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I'm trying to. I'm trying to to buzz through and see if there's any other one that could be worthy of a uh, of a exceedingly generic wax paper wrapped butterscotch candy. Catching up on the Twitch pitch, uh, Jarrett says take Milan and run with it. Um, and this is coming from our Celtic correspondent. So there yeah. you go. That's all you need to know. Yep. Uh, Jason Nix, Ukrainian uh, league education, was not even on the bingo card today, John. Good job. <laughs> uh, Jarrett wants to make a t-shirt with hashtag pesky Ukrainian side. Could work. Um, well, Kefsi pe- says... Pesky, pesky insert uh, nationality side here. Yeah, Kefsi says pesky Ukrainian side has been the bane of Italian clubs for years. Spain wants to take that off their hands. Uh, Burns says Arsenal will stomp rapid. Uh, they had to sell many veterans this summer, no cash, and normally their mm. salary budget is about 5 million euro per year. Um, Joe is with me. The orange, black, peanut butter things are the worst candy known to man or woman. I agree. Yeah. So I hope you don't get those on your birthday, Joe. Happy birthday, Joe Boss. Happy birthday, Joe Boss. Uh, Burns says Lusk is poor this season. They got punished for practicing during the spring COVID shutdown. Their coach got fired, etc. I'd like to know what the etc. are in that case because those first yeah. two are pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason Nix with a sponsor suggestion for Lusk. They should have a LASIK sponsor. True. That would work. I mean, yeah. they, they, need, they need the money, so uh, we could send them a, a LASIK sponsor that would go over to Austria and and do LASIK surgery. Um, that'd be, that would work. That would work. Mm-hmm. We'll get into George Bellow here in a minute. Um, he is on the uh, U22 list that MLS has done. The rest of it comes out today. 
Uh, Byrne says Lusk is the Astros, the Houston Astros of Austrian soccer. Uh, very analytical and also cheaters. Oh, really? Very nice. That's a that's a good comparison, Byrne. I like nice. it. What's um, the cheating part? That's what the t- the details I need now that I'm that, what, what I just said. They were practicing during the COVID shutdown. Their coach got fired. I mean, just take your pick, I guess, with Lusk. I don't know if they're beating on trash cans for anything, but uh, they were cheating because they were practicing when everybody was shut down. And uh, the colonel uh, says, the uh, talking about Dundalk, there's an entire country behind the town. What are the numbers on Dundalk? Dundalk is a plus 485 to win at home. Mulda has changed to a, a minus 179. The draw is a plus 333. I am all in on, and I'll, I'll go up a level on this from things because I, I got respect for the colonel and, and his love for Dundalk. Yeah. I can't go to Reese's, though. Um, no. Because that's the gold standard. I will go to the Milky Way. And I'll put a couple Milky Ways on on Dundalk here. I'll go hundred grand. How about that? Yeah, I I I, I think I've had those, but oh, it's been see, a long dude, I've, time. I've got to drop. I don't even remember the the abode. I I do not remember them. I mean, wow. I know the candy bar, but I don't remember anything about consuming one. Uh, it's like. Uh, Rice Krispies. Uh, That's good. That's like Rice Krispies, chocolate nougat, uh, the whole thing. Now you, they're they're very happy for me. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, can try it's, this. It's, it's it's a solid play. The hundred grand uh, definitely is an underrated an underrated candy. Period. Outside of this particular time of year, it is still a very underrated candy. I could try this. And uh, after your your conversation earlier about bacon juice, uh, Mizano is suggesting bacon juice boxes. Uh, Joe Boss got excited about bacon juice boxes, and um, that would be potentially bad because a room temp bacon juice box, according to J. Dub Parker, would result in a solidified bacon stream coming out of the straw. It would be bad. Yeah, it would stop. Uh, <laughs> Tesco Dan- asks, "Do they still make a hundred grand, or is it just a stock of them from twenty years ago?" I feel like when yeah. you open one, it's dusty. Yeah, I don't want I dusty that- candy. No, 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 but I, I do, I do know where that that comes from because you do kind of get that vibe on uh, the the does that the dust might be there and that it's just been kind of hanging on the shelf for a while. No, I do get that, but I think that that comes from the. Uh, so the, uh, you sold me on on what it tasted like, but now that yeah. you're saying it's dusty, I don't want it. Don't drop no, it by do. the house. No, I don't you want. Any, I don't want dusty candy, John. I will check the expiration date when I grab it. I will look on the underside. Yeah, I need the born on dating like a Budweiser has on these. Okay, this I need to know I'm when saying. it was made. I will check the born on dating of the hundred. They don't grands. have born on dating on hundred grands. Sadly, fine. I'll still check for born on dating, and then I'll sit there and say I didn't find it here. Eat this. No, and you said it was dusty, so I'm just going to take your word for but it. No, but I think that, that that's just the residue from the Rice Krispies. So it's not I mean, it's not old. It, no, it's, it's, it's I, think, residue I think it's just now. the byproduct of the Rice Krispies <laughs> on the on the top of the, the chocolate. <laughs> Tesco is a good one. Uh, Tesco's go-to old people candy is whatchamacallit. Okay, so basically... A hundred grand is kind of like a whatchamacallit, oh, except the whatchamacallit is rectangle. It is it is a it is rectangle where the hundred grand doesn't have a true form. It doesn't it, have a true form. What are you talking about? It's not a solid. It's not a solid it's rectangle. Solid. Well, the whatchamacallit <laughs> is a solid rectangle, but the hundred grand doesn't. It looks like that. Uh, <laughs> that you kind of just left it before you could mold it, and so it's just kind of like a mass. What? <laughs> what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I mean, it doesn't have a true form. No, it uh, no, it's not like a rectangle. <laughs> what you call it is a rectangle, right? Candy bars in their normal frames are rectangles. True. <laughs> um, peppermint. Or no, the uh, sorry, you've completely broken me. Like the Mounds Almond Joy thing, right? Um, yeah, but I mean, you get some circular ones like Reese's. Okay, but that's not a that's not a candy bar. Okay. So, but so the hundred grand is <laughs> we, more the shape. I didn't of a say it was food. only a candy bar. We were just talking candy. No, I was the peppermint patty. Bar. Thank you, Matt I Wagner. Was I was broken. What you would call it being a rectangle, 
the hundred grand is more the shape of the mounds or an almond joy is what I was which getting. is a rectangle no but it's not it's not a true rectangle though it's a rhombus I yeah, don't know. yeah. I mean, it's what? it's not like so, it's it's not like a monolith. <laughs> it's not something that you can sit there and say, yeah, that it it, it has flat edges to it. Okay, Jason Nix is going to try to save you here. Um, he says each one is unique. They blob it on blob it on the ingredients. I understand. Yeah. I'm scared that I do, but <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, Daniel Price says uh, he thought that Werther's Originals were the old person candy. I ain't knocking them either. No, they totally are. Werther's Original are the very old people's candy. But every once in a while, a good Werther's Original, I'll take one. It's been a long time since I've had one. It yeah. was a, a road trip candy at one point for me, and I have no idea why that started, but it just became a tradition. Um, it's probably been ten years since I've had a Werther's Original, but they're pretty good. Uh, you can have mine. A hundred grand is low sodium, according to the Colonel. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, Daniel and Tafka have stuff where they're railing on cable television and Tafka has a thing about refereeing. Do you want me to thank somebody before we bring in Mike and hold us for later? Yes. Uh, one second. Um, please thank Steve Apolinsky before you try to explain more candy shapes. Well, I could explain bacon grease. No. Apolinsky and Associates LLC, proud supporters of everything soccer down here in the SDH network. And if you remembered yesterday, Jason displayed a new piece of SDH clothing that you yourself can get at our Teespring store. More on that later. Wrongful death and serious injury matters. If this is a conversation that you need to have, a couple different ways that you can do it with the folks at Apolinsky and Associates LLC. You can give them a phone call, 404-377-9191. Get a free consultation that way. What you can also do is shoot Steve an email by himself, steve at aa-legal.com, or go to their website at aa-legal.com, hit enter, hit return, hit advance, hit the arrow key, whatever device you have, large device or small, goes to their homepage, a pop-up window pops up, because that's what pop-up windows do, otherwise they'd be called something else. 24-7, 365, you can have a conversation, 365 and a quarter, thank you, Chris Hutchison. You can have a conversation with whoever is at the other end of that pop-up window. Could be Steve. We don't know. But get all your questions answered. Over 30 years of experience, over $40 million in judgments for clients in Georgia and Alabama for wrongful death and serious injury matters. If this is a conversation that you need to have, it's with a firm that has been recognized as legal elite by Georgia Trend Magazine, being one of the top 100 firms in this here state of Georgia. Proud supporters of soccer down here in the SDH Networks. The website is aa-legal.com. You got into a whole part of the song that I don't think I've ever heard before. Well, I was, I, I there was kind a funky of guitar added, that showed up. Added some things, and I was waiting for the funky guitar to like stop riffing so I could get to that particular point of the song. So I spoke a little too quickly, even though I added more stuff. Again, like I, I just I, I don't know how things make sense in your head, and then they don't make sense when they come out of your mouth. It's really confusing. I'm baffled. This is news that you're baffled. Um, it's just it's more confusing than normal. I think is where we're at. Okay. Maybe it's a lack of uh, Mountain Dew this morning. Hello, Mike. Hey guys, hold on. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> Not much. Are you okay? Yeah, I was uh, moving some furniture. I forgot we rescheduled this to today. Oh so, no, we could we can let you go. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. What's going on? Not much. Getting ready for a busy, busy weekend in MLS, and we got stoppage time where we'll dig deep into Atlanta and DC this weekend. But this is the the nitty gritty now. I mean, this is where. Everything comes down to it, and Atlanta's on the outside looking in, going into it. Yeah, and I think in trouble, quite honestly. Uh, I think they're in trouble. Um, I think it's going to take more than six. I think it might now take nine. The reason why I say that is uh, Chicago has gotten hot. Montreal, I wouldn't say they're hot or even warm, but they're still ahead of you. Uh, Nashville, I think, is in. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. With that. I, I think they, uh, you know, again, they still have another game in hand. I think they're in. So it's you, Montreal, and Chicago, uh, and Miami in that mix as well. Uh, four teams for two spots. 
I think you're going to need results in three matches, wins in at least two. I don't know if they can do that. Uh, you know, their their form all year would tell you they have n- they would not be able to do that. So we'll see. It's a critical match against DC on Saturday. It's a must win. It's a must get three. If yeah. you don't get three, then I, I think you're you're really in panic mode. Um, you know, but Atlanta United is going to have to do something that they haven't really done all year uh, in a four match span, and that's get you know probably two or three wins in a four match span to make it. Uh, I don't know if they can do that. So we're going to see. Um, you know, the other problem, too, is you can only treat these regular season matches as, quote, unquote, cup finals so often uh, before you, you start to lose the ability to, to, I guess, summon up that kind of emotional energy. You, it, your emotional, your store of emotional energy is not infinite. So, you know, this is the spot that they've put themselves in. Now they got to see if they can fight their way out of it. But I, I think they're in trouble. I really, really do. Um, what You can be in slightly less trouble if you get a win on Saturday. But, you know, D.C. has played better. Uh, you know, they win in a draw in their last two matches. They played better. So we'll see. I would not take anything coming up this Saturday for granted. And you have to kind of focus at the task at hand. You can't really, if you're a part of the Atlanta United 18 or 23, you've got to focus on what's going on in front of you. Yeah, there's going to be some scoreboard watching, but you've got to let other folks do that and focus on what's going on in front of you. Bottom line is, Mike, you got to take care of business at home. Exactly, and you can't even bother watching the scoreboard. You don't have to watch the scoreboard if you win your remaining four matches. I don't think they'll be able to win their remaining four matches, but you know that's one way where you wouldn't have to watch the scoreboard. So you just got to take it. I hate to use the cliches. You got to take it one match at a time, one minute at a time. And, and, you know, if you come out of Saturday with three points, then you look at the table again and maybe you can look at what Montreal and Miami and Chicago have left after that point. Chicago, of course, still has a match in hand themselves. Uh, and then maybe you can reevaluate a little bit, but you're right, John. I mean, it, all you can control right now is how you play. And that's going to start on Saturday. Let's talk about Nashville real quick because I've got them in as well at this point. And, and you've been bullish on Nashville. They looked the part this week, um, and, and they've really found their form. I mean, yeah. you know, we talked about it coming into the year comparing Nashville and Miami because that, that's what you do when you have two expansion teams coming in. You're, you're looking at how they build. I think all the hype was on Miami, but what Nashville's done, sadly, somewhat under the radar – has mm-hmm. been really impressive, and and John Freeman, the radio voice of Nashville SC, has said that Gary Smith should be in the running for Coach of the Year. I totally agree with him. Totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. And I, I think even more so when you consider what happened to these guys in July. Yeah. Um, point. I totally agree with that. I think they really intelligently built their team. And we've talked about it a couple times. We've talked about it going into – you know, the what's it, three or four times that Atlanta United's played Nashville this year about how they concentrated, they focused on the spine of their team, which for an expansion team is a pretty sound philosophy. You know, if you're sa- if you're, the spine of your team is secure, uh, you can find complementary pieces and, and you can find ways to score goals. I think the scary thing now for the rest of the league is Nashville seems to have unlocked the goal scoring. You know, they, they've seemed to unlock the attack element of that team. That is scary. That's why I'll continue to say, you know, if you're looking for an extreme dark horse to win the whole thing, I would not rule out Nashville. Now, you have to balance what they're doing against the competition they've played. That That's obviously a huge part of it. You know, we, we need to see how they would do against, say, a Philadelphia um a New York City, a New England. I mean, some of the teams that, that they're likely to face in the playoffs, we've already seen them against Columbus. And certainly we've seen them against Orlando. But, you know, with Mukhtar now, they, they really have, I think, figured out how to play in the attack and how to be threatening going forward and score goals and not just score off counters. Uh, but the way they're defending right now, I'll continue to believe that in a playoff situation – where you can be very, very tactical, very, very cagey, and try to 
grind matches into stoppage and, and, you know, maybe extra time and maybe penalties, Nashville's going to give themselves a chance at a lot of these matches, even if they are the underdogs. So really impressed with how they're playing. Really impressed with how they've stuck to their philosophy. Really impressed with the way they fought through the adversity they had to deal with being uh, withdrawn from the tournament and dealing with the, uh, you know, the corresponding match compression that comes with it. I guess they've been a little bit fortunate that they've been able to play Dallas three times. And yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, they have results in all three of those matches. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that helps. But I, I just, I am very, very bullish on Nashville. Very, very bullish. Remember, too, if Nashville ends up seventh and Atlanta United does find a way to get in as as tenth, that's a first round playoff game up in Nashville. Um, you know, I, I I would be very concerned for any team that would have to play Nashville in their home park in the first round. Well, and Mike, you know, you and I will talk hockey any chance we get. But when you get into a, a normal Stanley Cup playoff situation, if you're an eight seed and you've got a hot goalie, mm-hmm. as we've seen in the past, you can make a run. And I, I think if you apply that to Nashville here, they get in, they've got sound, def- they, they're very sound defensively. Yeah. And we made the point about Walker Zimmerman, and we know what the difference is with LAFC without him there. Yes. Having that sound defense coming in as a seven or an eight or something like that. I think that the hockey analogy could apply here as well. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not necessarily a hot goaltender like you have in hockey. Uh, your center backs are your hot goaltender. <laughs> I think in, yeah. in, uh, in, in terms of uh, soccer in a playoff situation and they've got two good ones. Uh, their back line of four is outstanding. And uh, Joe Wells has been good too for, for what it's worth. Um, so yeah, I really, I'm high on them. I really am. And they are in, I I really think they're in, uh, I think it's a fool's errand right now to try to, you know, calculate what ifs with Nashville potentially being out. Uh, I, I don't see them missing, uh, unless they just got completely ice cold, but what are they now results in 11 of their last 12? Am I remembering that? And I think the, the match that was right before that streak started was the match here in Atlanta where Pitti scored twice. I mean, think about how long ago that was. Pitti Martinez was still on Atlanta United yeah. uh, and scored twice. So it, they, they played great. Really hats off to them. Full credit to them. Two uh, losses in their last 12. Say that again, Jason? Two losses in their last 12 okay, at Columbus so ten, and at, at Kansas City. Ten results in their last 12. Yeah. That's still a really yeah. good run of four. That's ridiculous. Really, really good run of four. Yeah, looking at the East, um, I think everybody eight and above is is in, no question. Uh, Nashville's in that eight spot now. They have a game at hand. Uh, they're one point behind the Red Bulls. I mean, they're they're four points but out of fifth right now, and they have a game in hand on everybody ahead of them between five, six, and seven. It's Montreal because of their kind of all over the place form. Although that win over Miami was massive for them to get to twenty three points. Chicago's on 20, they have a game in hand, Atlanta's on 19, Miami's on 18, Cincinnati's on 16, DC's on 15. I think everybody's still alive going into this last run, um, even DC and Cincinnati. DC's yeah. got to probably win out, and that starts for them on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Chicago's the one that I think has the toughest schedule uh, of who's left, and that's the only thing you're looking for positivity with them with one point ahead of you in a game in hand, is that they don't have any matches against Cincinnati or DC. Atlanta has to take advantage of those. Yeah. I think if you are looking at it in terms of Atlanta, I think if you get seven points, you're, you're in really, really good shape. I think so too. If you get six, I think it's nervous. And I think anything less than six, you're out. So let's look at the six point situation and it being nervous. Um, cause now Miami comes into play a little bit. It, you know, if you are assuming that you're getting your six points against DC and Cincinnati, then you aren't really worried about them jumping you. So then it becomes three teams for two spots, Chicago, right. Atlanta, Miami, you know, do you trust Miami to get seven points out of their last four? Uh, I do not. I, I, I really do not. Um, no, not with who they have. They get Cincinnati yeah. at home on decision day, but they right. they go to play Toronto. 
They yep. host Orlando. They do go to Dallas, which is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, they've got one common opponent, but they don't have a DC mixed in there. And they've got two of those on the road against Dallas, maybe the weakest of the other two that you have to go on the road, which might balance it out a little bit. Right. I think their schedule's tougher. I agree. I mean, I think at best they can get six out of that. At yeah. best. Uh, so now you look at Chicago. All right. So if Atlanta gets six, Chicago can get no more than five, but they have the extra match. Yep. So this is where it gets, and this is where them coming back to get that draw against Sporting, I, I think really does change the complexion of things because that was a match we were looking at on paper thinking, okay, I, I don't think Chicago is going to get anything out of that, even if they're home. And they did. And they did at the very last minute. And that mm-hmm. could be, a really, really critical goal. So Chicago's one point ahead of you. If if you're Atlanta and you think you need six, then Chicago can only get five. You're good on goal difference against Chicago. You're you're good on all that. So no problem. So now you gotta look at Chicago's five remaining matches and evaluate what are their chances of getting five points out of those remaining matches. Um you know, I I think they can get five. I think they can get six. I think they can get seven. Uh, mm. And if they get seven, then Atlanta United's got to find a way to get nine, which would include a road win, which, you know, unless they've been playing Nashville at the very beginning of the season or D.C., uh, we know how hard it is for Atlanta United to get a road win this year. So I think Chicago's I schedule's guys. tougher so, than you think. Well, go ahead. Um, yeah. me. They host Red Bulls Saturday. Yeah, okay. Midweek, they go to Philly. They come to Nashville on Halloween on the 31st. They're at Nashville. They're at yep. Nashville. Okay. They don't get the midweek going into Decision Day off. This is the makeup uh-huh. with Minnesota, where they go to Minnesota. Uh-huh. And then Decision Day, they host NYC. I count one sure point out of that. Ooh. Wh- which one's your sure point? The uh, the Red Bulls home. Ooh. Um. I don't think there's a I don't I don't know hmm may yeah, well, I don't even and, know if Red Bulls home their favorite. I don't think they're favored in anything. I, I, no 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 that's that's my thing. I don't think they're favored in anything. I think draw is probably the most likely outcome in that Red Bulls. The remaining four they're going to be underdogs. NYC maybe four. could get weird. They're so inconsistent. I don't know where to True. rate them. True. But I now look, Chicago's played better. Chicago has played better, so I don't want to undersell their form right now. Right. Um, but I think that's going to be tough for Chicago to yeah. get six points out. I do, too. Yeah. That's why the door's uh, open, in my opinion, for Atlanta. Yeah, but but here's the thing, guys. You cannot slip. Nope. Okay? Mm-mm. A draw nope. against D.C., and you're in deep trouble. A draw against Cincinnati, you're in deep trouble. If you lose to D.C. or Cincinnati, you are in desperate trouble yeah so that that's that's pretty much where it is right now you have no margin of error in these home matches i still think you might need to find a point on the road and that might become a little more clear as we get down to decision day uh but if you don't get six in your final two home matches you're in desperate trouble atlanta united will be favored to win both um, you know, I was taking a look at Cincinnati today, kind of working on D.C., and I, I was taking a look at how that match went against Cincinnati. Cincinnati's really, really struggling right now, especially in the attack. Um, we know that Cincinnati, yes, they can play tactical and try to hit on the counter and do all that, but you know, C- Cincinnati's really, really struggling right now as they try to play this season out. Uh, you should be able to beat them at home. D.C., again, playing better for their caretaker manager, but no excuses. You should be able to beat those guys at home. You do that, you hope that Chicago doesn't get red hot, you're probably going to be okay. You do that, I think, too. You look at the Orlando game as one where you've had success there this year even against a good Orlando team. A point there would be incredibly huge. Yep. Yeah, but a point there, I mean, it depends on what you're doing. Of course, of course. And and you have to assume those are wins. And if you can't, then you don't deserve to go in. If if you can't win your home games against the two weakest teams in the conference, you don't deserve a playoff spot. There's just no way around it. 
Yeah, I, I think just again in general, I mean, it, uh, on a scale of one to 10, I said this on the radio Monday, they asked me on a scale of one to 10, how concerned am I about them potentially not making the playoffs? Right now, it's about a six. Uh, now, if, if you get three points on Saturday, then maybe it goes down to like a three or a four. Uh, but right now it's a six um, because, again, you don't control your own destiny. Uh, even if you were to win out, you're not in control. I mean, probably if they won out, they would make it. But um, that's not guaranteed. You, you don't have mathematical control over where you end up right now. Um, when you only have four matches left, that becomes a little bit of a concern. So then... I'm going to pose this to both of you and get feedback on it. Uh, looking at the Halloween candy for the weekend already. <laughs> Miami at home against Orlando is a plus 115. Orlando is double that, a plus 230. I just don't understand why Miami gets so much. I don't respect. either. That's craziness. Yeah. I, they, they don't have I Iguain guess, in that match either. I guess Pizarro might be back for that. Yeah, he will be. But I don't know. I just Miami just gets so much respect for I don't know what reason. Um, I mean, we've seen them four times. They're they're solid. They're they're solid, but um, that that's absurd. I, I mean, now I, I, maybe the fact that it's down in Fort Lauderdale affects that a little bit. I don't know. That's but, too much, though. Um, I, I don't see that. I, I just don't see Orlando being plus two something to to win on the road at Miami. I don't see that at all. Chicago is a favorite against the Red Bulls, not by a ton. It's plus 130 to plus 200, but uh, that's that's a critical one, and that'll be available after we're done. I know what I'll be watching Saturday night. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, Cheering on the Red Bulls America's and making myself soccer sick. sensation, Caden Clark, will uh, <laughs> help take, take care of business in that. Man. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, you want to get into the uh, 22 under 22 since uh, 22 through 11 have been announced and there's a familiar name on it? Yeah, sure, the, yeah. the rest gets announced today. Uh, George Bello is on it at number 14. Um, Too I, low. Yeah, I want to see the rest of it. it. It's a little hard to, to start getting into it without seeing the whole list. Um, you've got Moses Nyman from D.C. at 22, Tanner Testament at 21, who I feel like might be low. Uh, Zachary Brockyard at at twenty from Montreal. Christian Caceres at nineteen. Brian Reynolds at eighteen. I, I like what Reynolds can be. I don't know if he's there just yet. Uh, Efrain Alvarez, who I don't know why he hasn't played more this season. Um, they should be playing him more for the LA Galaxy. They're not. Uh, Jesus Ferreira at sixteen. I like him a lot. Frankie Amaya as a player, I don't think gets a ton of credit. I really like his game for Cincinnati. I feel like he's on a bad team, and um, they don't really know exactly where he fits. He needs playing time. I really like Amaya. Bellows at fourteen. Sam Vines at thirteen. I think Bellows ahead of Vines, even with yep, a, a three-year age difference. I think Bellows a better left back than Sam Vines, and and I like yeah. Sam Vines. Yeah. Um, Araujo from L.A. at 12, and Louis Binks at center back for Montreal at 11. That's what we know so far. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. Let's look at the top 10. I think Barco uh, I, will be in the top 10, and, and people will probably have opinions about that. He should be. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just, mm, I, I don't know. I'm. I, I guess I'm biased because I see Bello play game after game yeah. after game. Bello, I think, might be the best player or one of the two best players on Atlanta United right now. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that because of that, he should be um, higher than where he is on the 22 under 22. That just feels low to me. Um, but, I mean, at the very least, he should be higher than Sam Vines, you would think. Yeah. Uh, uh, he feels I think like so. a top 10 player to me, but again, let's see. Let's see the rest of the top 10. I mean, some of the other names that are below him, like uh, Kasser is for Red Bulls, I think is too low. Um, but again, mm. I, I, I'm probably not the best guy to be asking about this because a lot of the Western Conference players you've named, 
you know, broke yard from Montreal, some of the other Montreal players. I haven't seen these guys really play this year. So that's going to, um, that's probably going to affect my, my perspective as well. Guys that bit. you'll see in the top 10 in some order. Uh, I think Barco's in there. I think Cole Bassett from Colorado is in there. Daryl DK from Orlando is in there. I mean, Palmer Call in there. Palmer Call's in there. Busio's in there. James Sands, Brendan Aronson, Mark McKenzie, Brian Rodriguez. That's who Tootle Rockman had as as his predicted top ten that's left. Uh, I don't think any of them are not in there. So I think that's yeah, a, right. a really safe assumption. Um, I don't know if Bello gets into the top ten for me, but I think he could be a little bit higher than fourteen. Akinola. Uh, Akinola's ahead of Bello right now. Yeah, I assume just in that top ten is what I was saying. Yeah, what about him? Like he's absolutely no. in the top ten. Yeah, no just, question. Yeah, zero question. Um, yeah, Io Akinola. Look, the U.S. Soccer Federation better be um, outside of his house yeah. with a boombox over their head and playing <laughs> Peter Gabriel songs. I, I think because he could go to Canada Io or Akinola's Nigeria. Akinola's best eleven in this league this year. Slight chance. Yeah, he, he'll he'll be in the mix. I think he's just outside of it because of, of what some others have done. But yeah, he's been that good. He's got eight goals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he hasn't played the full complement of matches. So, I don't know. It's a fun little thing to discuss. I know it's controversial every year. I know a lot of the controversy usually surrounds Barco, uh, which it is what it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll be anxious to see how it turns out. I think it's a feather in Bellow's cap that, that mm-hmm. he's 14th. It, it's, not, it's not a bad place to be. I want to be really clear on that. I, I just, again, what I see of him game after game after game and the fact that he continues to improve. I mean, he's not just maintaining. I think he's improving. Um, I, I just feel like George Bello is going to be a U.S. men's national team left back at, at some point in the next 48 years. Yeah, uh, I do too. But again, I see him play every game. I don't see a lot of these other guys play every game. I think for Bello to be where he is, as young as he is, is, is definitely a credit to the academy and the development that um, 100%. Tony Ann and Stephen Glass, all the academy coaches, um, all everybody has had. Frank DeBoer has had with him as well. I mean, Frank believed in him from day one. So, you know, all of that factors into Bello being here. He'll be higher as he, you know, has four more years to be on the U22 list if he stays in the league four more years. Right. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. All right, um, we got to save some good stuff, Mike, because we got stoppage time today. We do, yeah. We have a busy day. We have stoppage time. We have trivia tonight mm. at seven. Oh uh, yeah, I got to register for that. Yeah, yeah you do. John, you do have to register for That's that. That's right. And if if soccer down here listeners have not registered for that, get on it because uh, it's a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun with that at seven. And, and Jason's right. We'll have stoppage time at two p.m. on the ninety two nine the game Facebook page. I think we're going to have a lot of talk about this. Uh, Atlanta DC matchup, and in fact, uh, we'll be coming on right as Stephen Glass and Ezekiel Barco conclude their media mm-hmm. availability. So maybe we'll get some tidbits out of that that we can pass along to you yeah, as well. I'm sure, we will. So a couple teases for trivia tonight. Um, okay. I'm not going to give you questions to so go ahead and start looking up people, so don't even think about it. But a couple <laughs> of things that will be discussed during the trivia: um, Golden Spike will get discussed during trivia. Okay. That's going to happen. Um, you got some MLS history in here, goal of the year kind of talk. That'll be included. Uh, current events will be a new category this time around. So I hope you've been paying attention to the show because I think almost everything that's on the current events we've talked about on the show. Oh, actually, no, there's some just completely separate current events. So have fun with that. We got a potpourri section that'll have a little bit of everything. We got some CONCACAF, okay. some England. Uh, Champions League, because there's a ton of Champions League to talk about, and we will be talking about Americans in Champions League. That's definitely going to happen. And the pop culture round, which there will be some music questions, some mascot questions, uh, some TV and movie questions. It's going to be fun. And the good news is I didn't write any of the questions. (laughs) So they should be, hopefully... Uh, a lot more mainstream. Oh, you hadn't seen these yet. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll see. 
<laughs> you haven't seen some of these. This is going to be fun. Um, tonight, oh, gonna 7 o'clock. We always have fun doing this, by the way. I, I'm yeah. not just saying it because I'm doing it with Jason tonight. The, really, I mean, look, there's a lot of other, let's just say, not fun stuff on television tonight. This might be a good way to, to put yourself in a, a nice, calm, fun frame of mind for the rest of the evening. There should be more giggling on uh, our trivia than anything else on TV tonight. How about that? I really hope so. I mean, I know the Eagles are playing the Giants, and that might oh, be some giggling, but that that's might. not exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's a different kind of giggling altogether. <laughs> yeah. Boy. Um, well, we'll see you for stoppage time here in a few hours, Mike. Thanks. All right. Looking forward to it, guys. Take care. Be good. See Make you. sure you're following him, Mike Conti929 on Twitter. Uh, yeah, trivia is going to be fun. All you got to do is make a donation to Soccer in the Streets. Any donation gets you in. Please spread the word if you've already signed up. Please spread the word if you would like to sign up but you can't play this time around because we'll be back next month. We're doing this monthly uh, to help kind of bridge the gap a little bit for Soccer in the Streets because so much of their fundraising is based on events, and events are a little difficult to do at the moment. So, um, And the need has actually gone up at soccer in the streets for fundraising right now because of just how challenging it is so this is a little thing that we're able to do and have some fun doing it but also it's important to raise some money for the kids over at soccer in the streets so please spread the word um at soccer streets on all your social media platforms they've posted plenty about it um spread the word sign up if you can and we'll have some trivia um quizzing later on today uh getting back into what uh, we were talking about before Mike came back on about not being able to see the uh, Sinclair Regional. Yeah, Olympics. lots of lots and lots and lots of talk about this. Uh, Tavka said it should be noted AT and T streaming service only offers Fox regions and in all caps for an extra expense of eight ninety nine. Yeah, AT and T TV does have that. I of course have that because I had to. It's apparent now that this isn't a TV provider issue, but a Sinclair issue. Yes. You don't lose every yeah. single streaming service unless your demands are beyond reasonable. It's a major issue, and something's going to have to happen. Fox Regional can't be a direct TV and Spectrum only property. Uh, angry emoji, you Sinclair. Yeah, and and I'm I'm glad that that's being pointed in the right direction because I have seen people yelling at Atlanta United about it, and there's nothing they can do. They signed a contract with an entity that has changed hands. Um, not maybe not multiple times since they signed it, but at least once. Yeah, at least once. I, maybe twice. And, and I mean, there's only so much you can do in that. Uh, will it affect future deals? Yeah, I would assume so. Um, you've seen teams separate their streaming from their TV deals before. Uh, there are some that do that, and will Atlanta United be able to do that? I don't know what the length of their deal is. I don't know the terms or anything like that. But if they've signed a contract, even if the ownership of that entity has changed, you're kind of stuck. And it's not yeah. good for the, the club either. They can't be happy about it. Daniel Price is very mad at Fox and Sinclair right now. Can Atlanta United slash Braves slash MLS never broadcast on Fox slash FS1 slash Fox Sports Southeast? Slash Fox Sports South, please, as punishment for this gatekeeping. Hashtag angry. But this, and this is the hard thing about it is, you know, when this deal was signed for Atlanta United, and I, I don't know all the options and, and such with it, but when they partnered with Fox Sports South and Fox Sports Southeast when the team was starting, it was huge because it gave them a regional footprint that really nobody else in MLS had to that degree. And, and it opened up doors that, you know, a lot of teams have been trying to open up. Um, well, ownership has changed, and, and that affects everything, unfortunately. And you're you're just kind of stuck if you're the the club. And there's other teams in the situation too. Minnesota is in the situation. Uh, they're with Fox Sports North, I believe, and and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. And uh, I don't know. And and a lot of it depends on the length of contracts and whatever clauses there are to potentially get out of elements of it. I mean, if if you were even able to just pull the streaming portion out and, and put it up uh, geo-blocked, geo-fenced, but put it up on your website like DC United had to do. Um, if you're able to do things like that, then great. It can bridge the gap. But I don't know contractually what you can do and what you can't do. I would assume you can't. 
because that was probably a big selling point was Fox Sports Go and that availability of that because at the time that was a big emphasis for Fox. And when you saw everything separate, that's when Fox got massively confusing with the Fox Sports app and the Fox Sports Go app and you don't know where to go for what and it's just ridiculous. Tafka, with our discussion that we had with Mike about points needed and things like that, Tafka says, anything less than a win on Saturday and it's season over, that's the reality. No, it's, it's not the reality because then if you get three points in Orlando, then everything goes back. That's the thing. Um, but it then means you have to win on the road against a team where you will be a big underdog. So it changes the, the paradigm completely. It's not over, but it becomes far less likely. And then Tafka thinks it's eight points minimum in the remaining games. No. Even that may not do no. it. Nine points I, to secure. No, I thoroughly disagree, Tafka, because I don't see Chicago getting nine points out of what they have left. I, I do not see Chicago winning three of five um, with three on the road against Philadelphia, Nashville, and Minnesota, and at home to the Red Bulls and NYC. I don't see them winning three of five. I don't. I, I could see them winning two, and I, that's why I... I I hope six points is enough. I think you're going to need seven. So I think you're going to need to draw against Orlando or Columbus because I could see Chicago winning two of those five. I don't think they win in Philly. I don't think they win in Nashville. That extra midweek game in Minnesota on Wednesday could be their undoing because they don't get a full week of rest to host NYC on decision day. That could be what a game that I feel like could be winnable and might be must winnable for Chicago at that point, they might not have the legs to do it because this isn't the deepest of teams. I don't think they win three of five, though. Yeah. No, in looking at the schedule like we did with Mike, I think that the those road games are going to be tough for them. And that, that Minnesota game... The is, Red Bulls and the NYC games are tough, too. The home games are tough. Everything's yeah. tough for Chicago. Yeah. And so and that schedule-compressed schedule game with Minnesota... You know, that, that one is another one for me. That, that that whole run, like you mentioned, that whole run for me for Chicago, that is a rough run going in. Yeah. the A, a lot of the tone is going to be set on Saturday night. If they get three points over the Red Bulls, then we're having a very different discussion, even if Atlanta wins at home like they should on the weekend. Um, Chicago recent form hasn't been I mean it's been good but you got to look at who they're playing as well. Uh the draw with Kansas City, they lost to Kansas City uh the the previous 10 days before that. They beat DC, they drew with Montreal, they beat Atlanta at home, they beat Houston, they got blown out by Orlando, they drew with Columbus, which was a good result. They lost to New England, they drew with Cincinnati. I mean it's it's the same form of teams at this part of the table. It's not mind blowing. Um they're a good team, but they have the toughest schedule of this group of teams that are fighting for the spot, and that could end up hurting them. I really think that Minnesota game could be the one that makes it so difficult for them because you're playing now um, in you know two weeks in a day, so in 15 days' time, they're about to play five games where Atlanta's playing four. That helps. Uh, it's, it helps in that they have an extra game. It hurts in that they're compressing one more game into the schedule. We'll see. And you were mentioning, uh, wasn't uh, Barrich one of the, uh, listed as one of the 10 most underrated players in the, on the MLS soccer website? Article? Yeah, save that for a second. Um, we need to throw this out into the mix because we haven't this week. So uh, soccer and sweet tea, Johnny Wakefield up in Charlotte. Um, he is all in on hating Atlanta like everybody with Charlotte FC has. Uh, he was doing that before Charlotte even had a team. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, what are you looking at me weird for? He was on the never Atlanta thing because it was the yeah, fun thing was. to be. Um, they do great coverage of all the teams in the Carolinas. The reporting around uh, Charlotte FC's academy hosting Atlanta United's academy for matches at Bank of America Stadium um, on Halloween on October 31st, which is very cool. Uh, the reporting around that has called it the I-85 Derby or the I-85 Clash, and, and he's trying to find something better, and he asked us yeah. if we had anything better. So we're asking you if you have anything better for the Atlanta-Charlotte rivalry, better than the I-85 Derby or the I-85 Clash or whatever you yeah. want to call it. 
So make your suggestions. Uh, tweet at us at soccer down here. We'll we'll blast those out and see if anything sticks, and see what we can come up with. That's very cool, and I do believe all these are going to be streamed. Um, U17s play at noon. U15s play at two thirty. Uh, it'll be at Bank of America Stadium. Um, I think they are making some free tickets available for a very limited number of fans, but I believe those games are going to be available to watch here from Atlanta. First thing that popped into my head was Kings and Queens. So That's not a name for a derby, though. The King and Queen Derby or something like that. Mm, maybe. I don't know. There's got to be something better than that. Yeah, so like I said, that was just the first thing that popped into my head as you were talking about it. Yeah, there's got to be something better. Uh, Burn thinks Red Bulls can cause problems for Chicago, as do I. Uh, Chicago wants to try to play out of the back. Red Bulls press can disrupt that. Um, I don't know if Chicago really can play a different way right now. So I, I think that one will be difficult. Um, Kefsi says the Royal Rumble will get us sued, but that would be good. <laughs> yeah, it is. I like that. <laughs> that would be good. Um, yeah, I think Red Bulls can cause them problems. And I, I think Chicago's most likely win is at home against NYC on decision day. I just don't know what they have left in the tank by that point. Right. Uh, Shooter McGavin says the Rebs will lose to Nashville. Book it. Put your 401k on it. The refs will screw us. And he's wow. the, he is our resident New England uh, correspondent, Shooter McGavin. Um, not a fan right now of, of Bruce Arena or the referees. Or much of anything. Shooter, Does I'm sorry. Do know what's going on here? No, they don't. They don't at just all. Thought I, just thought I would ask. I could have just done this. Does anyone know what's going on here? No, they don't. Uh, the referees for a New England Revolution match do this. No, And looking to the sky and... Not coming up and with anything. Get, and walking you get away. mouth Bruce. Yeah, no, Bruce. Bruce says lots of things. There, there's no confusion about what Bruce is saying. Um, no, I do think the, Bruce. I do think the refs got screwed. Um, I'm with Shooter on this one. I, I think enough. they were. I think that was a bad decision in the last match. All right, MLS um, did a list of the most underrated players of 2020. Greg Seltzer wrote this. Came out yesterday morning. Fill for a minute. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, I'm a little surprised by this because I feel like, at least in in this neck of the woods, they have not been underrated. Uh, Artur is somebody we've talked about quite a bit. Um, Artur, I think, is vital for Columbus because they don't have Will Trap there now. Darlington Nagby's not Will Trap and wanting to just sit deep. Artur's had to sit deeper. Artur's critical. I don't think he's underrated at all. Uh, Robert Barrich maybe is underrated nationally. He shouldn't be. He's he's incredibly talented. Um, he's crafty, I guess is the best word I'll have for Robert Barrich. He doesn't look like he's fast, but he, he's got pretty good speed. Um, very, very technical. I love his movement off the ball. That's what, what I like most about Barrich. Um, he should not be underrated. If he is underrated, then we need to fix that. Shooter will be happy about Brandon By being on the list. He should not be underrated. Brandon By was a player in the draft last year that I hoped Atlanta would get watching him in the combine matches. He's the, the classic situation we see a lot with guys coming out of college who are attacking players who aren't good enough to be attacking players at the next level and get converted into outside backs. Uh, I mean, Chris Albright was one of these guys back in the day in MLS. Uh, We've just seen it so many times. He's the latest one. And he is excellent. He bombs forward down the right side. He's good in the final third because he was a a former attacker. And he's becoming much better defensively. Brandon Bay is a really good right back in this league. And he should not be underrated. I am, I'm happy he is on this list, and I will be happy when he's no longer on this list. And he's just being talked about as one of the better right backs in the league. Um, Seltzer put Antonio Carlos and Robin Janssen on this, the center backs for Orlando. If anybody is underrating Orlando's defense, they're missing the plot here. Because Janssen's been outstanding since coming to town, and Antonio Carlos is a good partner for him. I'm, I'm not... As sold on Antonio Carlos, Robin Janssen's one of the best center backs in the league. Orlando's defense should not be underrated at this point. 
Uh, Chicago's holding midfield should not be underrated at this point. I feel like we talk about it a ton with Gaston Jimenez and Alvaro Medran. These are our two very talented players that fit together very well. They make this Chicago team far more interesting than they've been in a long time. They should not be underrated. I don't think they are. They're not underrated around here. Uh, it is the underrated. Uh, it is a list of the most underrated players in Major League Soccer at MLSsoccer.com. Shooter, um, I do not think that those two. I don't know if they are underrated. If they are, then maybe I'm just wrong with the national stuff. Um, Marky Delgado is another one that has been on on my list for a while of guys that I think are, are underrated in the league and shouldn't be by this point. Guess he still is. I think Delgado should have got some national team call-ups by now. Um, he's been more important this year where he should no longer be underrated because of filling in for, for Michael Bradley in more ways. Him and Osorio have had more to do. They've done it. Uh, Delgado's great, great player. Uh, Felipe Mora and Nishkoda from Portland. I would agree that they're underrated. Um I don't know exactly where to put them just yet. And some of this is down to just not seeing Portland as much as I normally do in a season. Nishgoda has looked really good at times. Um, more a fourth in the league and goals per 90 minutes played. So, yeah, those guys should not be mysteries anymore. I don't know if Kyle Duncan is a mystery anymore. He's on the list. I said it on the the TV broadcast when Red Bulls were at the bins. I think Duncan's a potential U.S. men's national team right back. Uh, He's been really, really good all year long and really, really good in the attack for Red Bulls. Duncan should not be underrated. I don't know if he is underrated to this degree. I really don't. Jose Andres Martinez, have you been listening to this show? Like I, I feel like we've talked about him a ton for Philadelphia. He's what makes Philadelphia better. Because as good as Harris Madunian was for them last year, and they were good last year, Martinez has allowed Bedoya and Montero and Aronson to do so much more because he's a true defensive midfielder. They needed that. So if, if people are not rating Martinez, then they are not showing respect to the, the holding midfielders. And you know on this show, we have an appreciation for our holding midfielders, and Martinez is one of those. And Lewis Morgan being on the list is the one that drove me nuts. Lewis Morgan's one of the best players in the league right now. Yeah. And if people aren't seeing that, and I think they are, but maybe they, they don't because with of Pizarro. As much as, with as much time as Miami's on TV? Um, nationally, I don't think they are, really, John. Um. But Morgan should be the one that people are talking about with Miami. And if they're not, they're just not paying attention. And that's not being underrated. That's people not doing their jobs. Morgan's been outstanding. He's been one of the best signings in the league this year. I don't care if he's not Iguain or Matuidi. Morgan's been the one who makes that team go, even more than Pizarro. So Morgan, (laughs) Celtic would like to have Lewis Morgan back right now. Mm -hmm. Morgan should be one of the most rated players in the league this season. If he's being underrated nationally, according to Seltzer and MLSsoccer.com, then that's got to change. I don't know if that's the case. It hasn't been here, but that's got to change. Okay, a couple little bits of... um, It's not really news because it's there, but let me hit this with it. Uh, so Felipe Cardenas on Twitter says that Atlanta United's deal with the Fox Sports Networks runs through 2022. Um, Jeff Reuter of The Athletic reports that Minnesota's ends at the end of this season. Um, Chris Wright, who is Minnesota's... Uh, I'm not sure his exact title. He's responsible for the day-to-day business ops and sporting ops of Minnesota United. He is quoted as saying, because of where we're at and where MLS is going relative to the new league-wide rights deal or new league-wide rights that are up after 22, we will be very deliberate in our thinking. So they're going to have two years to do a deal. Atlanta's deal goes through the end of that. They've tied it to all the national deals. That's what MLS is trying to do. I, I think... What MLS is is working towards in this regard, the national deals are up at the end of the 22 season. 
they have told teams to not sign local deals past the 22 season. I think they want to take everything to the market, hoping that that would get them a bigger number. And then they could sub-license regional and local things out. Because I don't think they would ever go to a point where they don't have local TV deals. That doesn't that doesn't make sense. I don't think they would say no local TV deal on a you know on an ABC like some have or on a CBS like you know, one of the the heavyweights in the market. I don't think they would want to avoid that. And some teams have that. Um, I think if teams can figure out these sorts of things, you know, you want to be on on regional sports networks if regional sports networks can get sorted out. The streaming side is probably a big conversation nationally and wanting to separate the local streaming rights out and make those national. I get that. But I don't think they will avoid local TV deals. I think they want to sell it all to one person and then sub-license. So if, uh, say, ESPN grabs it because of ESPN Plus and they pay the league a pretty number for it, um then ESPN is going to have to figure that out, you know, or are they going to be able to make more money through additional subscribers or are they going to make more money by sub licensing out local broadcast rights and still doing the blackouts like they have with MLS live and all that. I don't know. I don't know where it goes. I mean, I think we're going to see the landscape really change between now and the time that deal comes up because I mean, you're seeing it worldwide where sports networks, some are struggling some are finding ways through it. ESPN's going to lay a bunch of people off here, it looks like. Um, a lot of people behind the scenes, and they've already done that once this year. Uh, this is the reality at the moment. Um, I think everybody's hopeful that, especially in the sports world, it will turn quickly, especially in the sports media world, it will turn quickly because some organizations are able to do a TV product, even without fans in the stands. Others aren't. So what does it look like in that next deal? Who knows? But right now, it sounds like Atlanta's deal is through 22. I do wonder if there's any out clauses in case of not being able to meet all the terms of the deal. And if you're not able to guarantee that you're on in a certain number of households, then do things change? Typically, there are out clauses and deals for things like that, correct? Yeah, there's always the... There's always an out clause for one reason or another. Those are that's standard business practice. Yeah, um, we shall see. Uh, we, we've talked about the supporter shield situation. Um, they did not send a public message out about this, but they sent it out to supporters groups. That basically they said, uh, "Yeah, we messed up. Um, we're having a voting process to figure out how to correct us messing up. They tried to throw some shade at MLS, which made no sense at all in, in any of what their conversation. And they still haven't resolved anything yet about giving out the supporter shield this year. It's it's silly. I just I, I don't get it. I don't know what the grandstanding is truly accomplishing except angering a fan base in Toronto right now who's in the driver's seat for it and should get that actual piece of hardware just it doesn't make any sense uh cleaning up stuff on the twitch pitch and we'll get that on twitter as well um burned talking about robert barich typical high-end player from the former yugoslavia great on the ball tricky street footballer deep down but not great athleticism Uh, for reference he scored 30 goals for rapid vienna in 2015 which gives you an idea of how weak the austrian bundesliga is when he moved to france his goals dried up uh, yeah, I guess MLS is in between the two. Uh, that's a fair way to put it. You keep uh, turning your mic on and off. What's going on? I'm not trying to touch it. Uh, the the uh, I guess the cursor was over it. I don't know. I don't know. It was going on and off. I was just making sure. No. There's no telling with what's going on. You're not kidding. Uh, uh, new, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, Bob Williams has uh, in his inbox some NWSL notes. Uh, NWSL Fall Series games on CBS averaged 383,000 viewers. Year-to-year, NWSL domestic television audiences were up nearly 500%. NWSL mentions on social platforms up 152% year-to-year, and NWSL coverage in news media is up 55%. Yeah, uh, some studies showing who was up and who was down with these things just conveniently left the NWSL out of it for some reason. And Lisa Baird had to go off and show some of these numbers. 
um, which she should have because that's ridiculous. I mean, and these were studies that had the WNBA included too. Um, so it's kind of silly that you're leaving the NWSL out. Uh, it's been a great year in, in some ways for them. It absolutely has. But now, how do they deal with some of their stars not being here to start the next season? How do they deal with what a next season looks like from a financial perspective? Um, Angel City FC, does that come in and give a big boost to the league? You know, what are the next steps? How do you build on this? Because they've handled the pandemic about as well as you possibly can. Uh, but where do you go from here? That's the next step. Because this is, this is really good to get the pat on the back, and they deserve the pat on the back. But now what? Uh, Pacine on Twitter says, Charlotte and Atlanta should be the Battle of the Bells. The Battle of the Bells? B-E-L-L-E-S. Hmm. I don't know about that one. And then Michael Head on the flip side says, stop forcing Derby names. Let them happen naturally and no need to determine prior, uh, determine prior to academy matches. Jeez, let every game, gee, every game does not require a name. Uh, relax. I'm not, I'm not demanding a name. I'm asking you, what are you going to name it? Y'all figure it out. I don't care. <laughs> if y'all come up with something that sticks, great. If nothing happens, that's cool too. I'm not going to like pick something and say, it's the Battle of the Bells. That's it. I don't want to hear anything else. No, y'all figure it out. And did you see the article that Brian Strauss put out at uh, SI about the National Soccer Hall of Fame voting changes? Yeah, um, I think Kessie pointed that out in the Twitch Ricky pitch. Ricardo did too. Yeah. Um, or not, Ricky did in the Twitch pitch. Um, I saw it. Uh, what are they doing to fix it is the question because we know the problems with it. Um, the executive director, uh, Jorn Buchholz, told Sports Illustrated, what frustrates me and has really made us look at this process over the last couple of years is that when we do come out and announce our class, a lot of times it's about who didn't make it instead of who did, and I don't like that. I'm incredibly disappointed Hope didn't get in, but that was the conversation. I think doing this will help. So they're overhauling the screening and voting process uh, that determines which retired players, coaches, and contributors are awarded um, a spot in the Hall of Fame. So the screening and voting process is being overhauled. Uh, revision has been in the oven for months. Um, it is set to be unveiled today. Um, look, anything like this, I mean, Buchholz is right. Like any voting thing like this, you're going to talk about you know, how close were they to get in, how close were they not to get in. Like, who didn't get in? Who should be in? And that's part of the discussion. But it's gotten to the point that all of the discussion is about why isn't Hope Solo in? You know, why isn't Carlos Bocanegra in? Why is it with these things? It's all about the why aren't they in? You know, why wasn't Carlos in before? Like, Steve Trundolo, why isn't he in? Like, these things are, are – that's the topic. And it should be about who's going in. Um Buchel says the process will result in two to four people going into the Hall of Fame, more than likely three or four people each year. Two or three of those inductees will come from the player ballot. Uh, there's a new procedure. It's 10 pages long. It's complicated. Uh, they will reduce the number of people on a ballot to ensure that votes aren't so easily spread among too many candidates. They will narrow the pool of voters uh, to ensure it's comprised of engaged experts who closely follow the game. Screening committees will be formed to discuss and determine who makes the final player, veteran, and builder ballots, and a mechanism has been created to add potential candidates who've contributed in novel ways. Uh, think of somebody like Taylor Twelman, whose playing and broadcasting career, plus the concussion advocacy, might combine to get induction rather than one aspect or another. Uh, Clive Charles would be another one who could potentially get in with that kind of a a combination of, of contributions, Tony Sane, who I think could get in as a player strictly, but what he does with his foundation in Minnesota is, is amazing. And that should, you know, warrant a discussion about getting in and include should be part of his candidacy. So we'll see how everything looks. I'm glad they're addressing it. I'm glad they're realizing that it is broken. And sometimes that doesn't happen. They are realizing that and it is good. Uh, Kepsi is telling Scotland to bring Lewis Morgan into the national team, which they probably should if he's playing like this. 
Yep. Uh, potential inductees continue to separate it. Player, veteran, and builder. Player, <laughs> we, we already... Okay, go ahead. We already covered that. We were, just, we were moving on. Yeah. It must have been retired for three years. Veterans or players retired for 10 or a more. Lot builders, of, coaches, administrators, referees, and everyone else. A lot of that stuff's the same. Nothing's changed. Like, they're going to announce more. Well, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Let's move on. All right, so we're going to announce more. Uh, also on the board, we have... Uh, Bart with a question. What's up, Bart? If Atlanta United fails to make the playoffs, which results after MLS is back will you look at as ones that we let slip away? For me, it's Good Red question. Bulls and Montreal losses at home. Even a point from those would have been massive. Good question. Um, let's look back. So after MLS is back, what would cost you getting into the postseason if you don't? Um, hmm. I think the Miami game at home that was scoreless, the Miami game you lost at home to one, those are probably the ones I come back to because I think you're a better team than Miami. And those are games that you should have gotten results. And the the one down there, the first one, all right, you're on the road. I'm not going to get too hung up on it. I, the Miami games at home are the ones that stick with me probably the most. The Toronto game, where at least you would have gotten a point out of it, that's going to stick. The Red Bulls one is frustrating, too, because of the first 45 minutes that you played and you were so good there and you didn't get anything to show for it. But the Miami home games are the ones that I'll come back to for sure. And a couple of other Darby ideas have come across the board. Okay. Chiefs coach Steve says the Darby name should be train-related. Train-related is good. Is was I don't know the, the train history between Atlanta and Charlotte as well. I, I I'd assume I there was a, it was something, but I just don't know yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know who, what, you know, which lines ran from one city to the other. But Piscina is suggesting the very useful engine football game match. <laughs> there you go. That's what works. And, just don't uh, come up a, with a silly acronym like Louisville and Indy, please. Don't don't FC. be like hipster thing because we're we're funny. Don't don't do that. If there's not a name, there's not a name. Don't do that. That's not a name either. The, was it the Louisville Indianapolis Proximity Association football contest? Don't do that. Don't be that Lipa, guy. Don't, Lipa FC. Don't, don't do that because it's really obnoxious. And it takes you 30 minutes to try to remember what the acronym it's is. It's just really like, hey, we don't want people to get excited about this game because it's ours. Like, no, don't do not do that. That's just don't. Bruh. We, got a, bruh. we got a game tonight. There are a bunch of games tonight. And today, what which yes. one are you referring to specifically? Oh, since we were in MLS, I was discussing uh, Cascadia. Yes, there is that game tonight. That is true. Uh, what are the juice box numbers on it? The Halloween candy. Uh, Seattle Halloween has candy. Uh, a minus one thirty. Portland a plus three twenty, and your draws a plus three hundred. Give me the the bucket that you bob for apples in on Halloween. Uh, give me the whole bucket of apples and gross water and all of it on Portland. Wow. You and Geo. Yep, I'm, I'm back on the train. So uh, give me the whole bobbing for apples bucket on the Timbers. And uh, four matches all at 8.30 tonight in Copa Libertadores. Yes, uh, we've not talked about Copa Libertadores. Um the Grêmio América de Cali match is probably the most interesting. Grêmio is trying to hold off Internacional for the top spot. They must win to guarantee that. América de Cali is trying to get into second. They have to win and flip goal differential. They also have to hope that Inter loses on the road in Chile against Universidad Católica. Universidad Católica has something to play for because they're trying to get into that third spot to get into the Copa Sudamericana ahead of América de Cali. So those games are all interconnected and interesting in that group. Uh, the other group, Group H, the fight's for second place because Boca's already won the group. They host Caracas, who's currently in second. Third place, Libertad, level on points. They host Independiente Medellin, who can't get to the Copa Sudamericana. They're eliminated. I don't know what they come in with. So you expect Libertad to win. Caracas has to win and keep the goal differential at 
Boca, which will be very, 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 very difficult. Um, I would love to see it. I think it is unlikely. What are the numbers in Group H? And let's start with Libertad, Independiente, Medellin. Don't even think about anything on Independiente, Medellin, but what's the numbers? Independiente, Medellin is basically a plus 660. Yeah. Libertad, a minus 245, and your draw is a plus 365. Don't do it. Don't do anything with it. Boca and Caracas. Boca minus 455. Caracas, a plus 12 and a quarter. And your draw is a plus five sixty three. All right, shift the uh, the the crazy bucket of bobbin for apples over to Caracas because that's madness. They've got something to play for. Boca doesn't. You always have that opportunity where Boca comes out and is flat because they've got really no motivation here. Caracas has every bit of motivation. There's no way Caracas should win. But if you are really feeling like a degenerate tonight, that is where I will take my bucket of gross water and bobbing for apples, too. Sorry, Gio. You get the bit of honeys instead. And the other two, uh, Gremio is a minus 255. Yeah. America de Cali is a plus 778. Yeah, uh, Gremio. Gremio should win. Your draw is a plus 355. Uh, Universidad Católica is a plus 175. Internacional a plus one sixty and your draws a plus two twenty seven. I'll throw the the little Halloween size uh, Kit Kats on Universidad Católica pulling an upset. Okay, at home um, in the Libertadores, it is the first time that three clubs from Ecuador make the round of sixteen. Independiente del Valle joins Liga de Quito and Delphine. Uh, Independiente del Valle came in second in Group A. Flamingo won the group under Dolme Tarrant. He got off to a slow start in everything, but, man, things are pretty good for Dolme right now at Flamingo. Uh, Palmeiras and Guarani advanced as 1-2 in Group B. Nacional edged Racing out on goal differential to win Group F. So we're down to the last group play tonight. The draw, the sorteo, is tomorrow, I believe, right as we finish up tomorrow. The Libertadores draw for the knockout round will be taking place. The draw for the Copa Sudamericana will be taking place after that. And those games will all get started very quickly. So it's just heating up in South America. Um, We'll see if anybody else talks about bullets for the opposition coming in. Uh, CONCACAF League's got three matches back-to-back-to-back to back to back tonight. The late game is the one that I'll probably be keeping an eye on. Motagua hosting Comunicaciones. Why are you watching that over Seattle and Portland? It's, it'll be on one monitor and the other will be on the other. Okay. I mean, no uh, offense to Motagua. I mean, we're good friends with Motagua and all, but you got an MLS match at the same time and you I got know, Libertadores games. Like There, be, there are priorities here. Okay, that's fine. Alo Alense and Cibao is your 6 o'clock. Municipal de Meno and Forge is at 8, 15, 10, 30. It's Motagua and Comunicaciones. Uh, let's see. Oh, Tafka's in this morning. He's been and in, yes. He's, Tafka says, I can imagine that refing is hard in U12 Rec League. Yes. Kids are just learning the real game, the rules, and the tactics. I get it. You don't want to send off a 10-year-old. No. But when my player stays on side and gets a breakaway at full speed, be at full sprint down the middle of the pitch and your defender just decides to push him down from behind right outside the box to prevent the goal something has to be said or done not even a yellow card shown what incident is he talking to i don't watch the u10 league john but i'm assuming he's talking about one of his own games okay i thought he might be taking that as an example and applying it to professional i don't like the look of it also, yeah, the referee's got to handle that better, Tafka, because um, I understand what you're talking about. Uh, you have to do something there. I, you don't want to send off kids. I get it. But, yes, you have to show that there's something going on here. Um, in a perfect world, the uh, the other coach would, would pull the kid off and explain that, yes, in a normal match as you get older you would be red carded for that you'd potentially be suspended for that um there's got to be at least a yellow card if your league has an agreement not to send kids off then that's a different conversation but there's got to be a card there to show that hey you can't do this so you don't create bad habits and chiefs coach steve is suggesting the bullet train derby do we have a bullet train between atlanta and charlotte 
I had no idea. I don't think so. Otherwise, I'd take it and not drive three and a half hours from here to Charlotte. I like driving, so I would probably still drive. Um, yeah, maybe. Like I said, it's up to the, the supporters to sort this out. We're, we're just throwing it out there, and y'all can discuss and fight it out yourselves. We are not a very leading very useful fights. engine football game. No, I'm leading a fight against that nonsense. I am absolutely leading a fight against those kinds of things. Please don't do those kinds of things. Please don't try so hard. Please don't do that. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Just don't have a name if, if that's the case. No, no Lipa FCs. No, me. because it's obnoxious. Yeah, if it takes me too long to have to think it. No, crazy. it has nothing to do with how long it is. It's because it's obnoxious. Just don't have a name. Don't have a name that's not a name that's making fun of names that is, ooh, so cool and cynical. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do finger guns and bangs and all that stuff. <laughs> Don't, please. <laughs> Anything else on Twitter? Nope, we're caught up. Okay. Um, Ricky says about the regional sports networks, when baseball, basketball, hockey gets ready to come back, the outrage will come back up. It will. Yep. They'll get it sorted out before that. Uh, Mezzano says, do you see the forming of a MLS network like NFL and MLB have done? Yeah, I actually could see that. And I could see it in partnership with whoever is the primary winner of the bidding for the next contract. Right. Um, or uh, as one of the partners, if maybe somebody doesn't get the primary option, which I think ABC and ESPN will get. Um, but if, say, Turner comes in and, and says, you know what, we've got some things that might be exciting for you on the digital space with, with BR Live, uh, we've got the Turner Networks where we can put games, but we can also build out a network with you, the MLS Network, that would be over the top, that would be fully digital, because we've done these things. So that would be a very interesting potential partner. I absolutely could see the forming of an MLS Network in that way. And I think where MLS could be unique, and this is where Soccer United Marketing comes into play and could be a useful element to this, is you could tie in, it could be the MLS network, but you could tie in some other aspects to it. You know, we've talked about CONCACAF Champions League rights, like being difficult to, to get and watch games in English, for example. They could grab those if nobody else does, and they could put them on their, their network. So there's things like that that they could do. I don't know if it will be exactly like NFL or MLB, where it is a cable network. I think it could be a little bit more like a, um, like a digital property like what cbs all access cbs is doing with a lot of their champions league stuff where a lot of it is available via stream off air you know over the top that kind of thing like a wwe network kind of situation i think it could look more like that but done with a partner that's what i'm thinking what about the relationship that they have with pluto and doing pushing things over like there pluto, pluto's not powerful enough like, I don't think Pluto would, would work. And Pluto, I don't know how they monet. I don't think they can really monetize anything separately. So I think it would be partnering with, like, a, a Turner's infrastructure to build out a WWE network kind of thing. And that could be something that Turner tries to steal the, 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 the out-of-market streaming that now ESPN Plus has had for a while. Maybe that's something they try to do to put it all there. I don't know. Um, I think it could be very, it could be done in a very different way than we've yeah. currently seen it. But I do think a network could come out of it for sure. Uh, what else is on your mind? What have we not covered this morning? Uh, you you failed. You um you had an assignment from yesterday and you failed. What did I write down? You failed. The best eleven baldies. Yeah, you failed. You forgot to bring that back up. I did. Because it's on. Are this there things that make you angry? Yes. It's, Fred, on this legal pad over here, as opposed to How many legal pads the legal do you pad have? that I was writing on over here. Why do you have multiple legal pads and in different places? Like, doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose? Yeah, it does. I always forget that I'm writing on one, and then I end up writing on another, and then you lose the information that you had the day before. That's because not good. you forgot where you put it. You should probably be more organized, John. Um, one thing we didn't get into that I wanted to touch on, because, man, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but we're not going three hours, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, Tom Marshall, ESPN, go check it out. Uh, interview with Javier Aguirre, legendary Mexican manager, uh, managed in La Liga, managed the Japanese national team. He said that Major League Soccer is more attractive to him right now than Liga MX at this stage of his career. He said there is uh, far more stability. 
for managers in MLS than in Mexico. He said, yes, it is attractive because I see potential, room to grow, develop, progress. I see seriousness, respect for projects, and that kind of organization I like. It's true that it is a closed system, that there isn't relegation that takes away a little competition. But I saw Matias talking about Almeida. Uh, lost four games spectacularly a little bit ago, and under no circumstances did they question the coach's position. Maybe a little bit they did. They know he's a great coach, and they know the project is good, that they are playing in a certain way, thinking about the future and winning a title. That seems fantastic to me. He said in a, in a similar situation in Mexico, there would be little chance of the head coach continuing. The turnover of coaches is high in Mexico. Five of the 18 teams have made a change since the start of the current season, which is bonkers. He said, imagine that scenario in Mexico. We'd fire the coach in two seconds. Everyone, not just the media, but starting from people inside the club. So MLS does appeal, talking about it's more attractive for him. He's uh, in his early 60s. You know, I think he's still got plenty of years on him and working. He's a name who has come up. Um, He said he's been in the running for two jobs in MLS recently, but he missed out. So I'd be curious to know what those could have been. He also said that he's interested in returning to Japan, where he had previously managed the men's national team. So Javier Aguirre, keep those things in mind. But the the fact that managers get more time is something that will be attractive for Atlanta's job search, for DC's job search, for any other job searches that pop up. Uh, LA Galaxy, for example, could be one of those. Um The U.S. men's national team will have to find another opponent in November. It will not be Australia. They have called off a training camp, scrapped plans for matches against England and the U.S. uh, due to the worsening COVID-19 crisis in Europe. Uh, They had been close to confirming the dates, but said that the ongoing and worsening COVID-19 landscape across Europe has forced it to reconsider. See what shakes out of that. Um, Gianni Infantino, president of FIFA, spoke about this European Super League, Premier League thing. And was a little surprised that he did. He uh, said, and this was published by a German language newspaper, Argor Zeitung. Zeitung. Sorry, my German is horrible. Um, It was also published by other regional Swiss media. He said that FIFA was focused on the success of a revamped Club World Cup, which will feature 24 teams and be held for the first time in China in 2022. As FIFA president, I'm interested in the Club World Cup, not the Super League. For me, it's not about Bayern Munich against Liverpool, but Bayern against Boca Juniors. Liverpool have 180 million fans worldwide. Flamengo have 40 million fans, and 39 million of them are in Brazil. Liverpool have maybe 5 million fans in England and 175 million fans around the world. I want clubs from outside Europe to have global appeal in the future. That's my vision, to have 50 clubs and 50 national teams who can become world champions. It's all the right things. It throws a lot of cold water on the the European Super League talk that has gotten panned everywhere, which is understandable, except for the clubs that have reportedly been leading the charge. They have not said anything about it. Uh, Very curious to see how this continues to move forward. Another one I'm curious to see how it moves forward is IFAB and substitutions and concussions. So IFAB has recommended trialing the use of additional permanent substitutions in cases of suspected concussion. They said that on Wednesday. IFAB did not make any mention of temporary substitutions, which the Global Players Union, FIFPRO, argued would be more appropriate. I'm with FIFPRO on this. We've, we've talked about this. It should be a temporary substitution while a player can get fully checked out for a concussion. IFAB said that their concussion working group had recommended starting trials from January of 2021 in any competition that is interested in taking part. I do think MLS will be one that takes part in anything that is available because it's been very front of mind in this country with the concussion conversation. MLS should absolutely take part in any trial that they can. I would advocate for that in a major way. Uh, IFAB said a clear and uniform approach is needed, which can operate effectively at all levels of the game. The group agreed that applying and, quote, if in doubt, take them out, unquote, philosophy would be the best solution to safeguard the health of football players. Right now, referees stop the match in any case of suspected concussion. They allow the examination of the injured player who can only return to the game with permission from the team doctor. 
Now, Thief Pro says this idea doesn't go far enough. They want players to be looked at by a neutral doctor, temporary substitutions allowed for up to 10 minutes while the examination takes place. I wondered what the time frame would be, 10 minutes. Okay, I'm good with that. Thief Pro is concerned that if only permanent substitutions are allowed and a player has to be removed immediately with no chance of returning, sporting interests could influence the decision. If Lionel Messi, for example, is in this situation, Barcelona is not going to want to sub him out. Even if they get a bonus substitution for a concussion situation, they don't want to sub Lionel Messi out. So they're going to put him back out there. A temporary substitution would allow Lionel Messi to get checked out in this scenario. And if he needs to come out, okay. And if you want to make the temporary substitution when it is allowed in these cases to become permanent and allow a bonus substitution... I'm okay with that. I'd, I'd rather not, to be honest, because I don't want to see concussions treated differently in terms of substitutions than a broken leg, because you don't get a bonus substitution for a broken leg. You have to make a substitution. If you're out of them, you're out of them. But a temporary one to allow proper examination of a player, I am all in favor of. If they want to take it the step further and say that that would be turned into a permanent one if they need to. Okay, that's further than I would go, but okay. Uh, in July, FIF Pro urged for the introduction of different pilot protocols across national or international competitions to gather evidence. We'll see what IFAB actually goes forward with. I think they need the temporary substitutions. Yeah. That's uh, the key. I, yeah, I'm right there with you. It's the temporary subs for me. Okay. Um so make sure you have the right legal pad for tomorrow. We'll talk about the bald footballers. All right. I've got two, four, six, eight. So J-Dub, I'm sorry we let you down. You're going to have to save that for tomorrow. Um, let's see. We have not talked about the USL Championship uh, hosting developments. Phoenix relinquished their right to host the final if they get there. They did the right thing. That's great. I'm glad that they did because they would have gotten the ability to host based off of a forfeit for um, Junior Flemings, who's been suspended, uh, saying awful things that should not be allowed in public, let alone a football pitch, to Colin Martin. Um, so they did not deserve to get that ability to host. They are giving that up, and that's the right thing for Phoenix to do. They're also reinstating uh, Rick Chance, their coach, and this is after... Colin Martin has basically given it the okay. Um, I, I'm okay with that. If if everybody's okay with that, and if Colin Martin and San Diego are okay with that, fine, move on. Um, I really had a massive problem with Chance's initial comments after the afterwards. Yep. The comments during everything were bad. I thought he made them worse when he doubled down with his social media comments afterwards because I don't think he got it at all. I hope he's learned from that. He, if he hasn't, then he will be back in the situation again. But if if Colin Martin's not having a problem with it, it's not my place to have a problem with it. So if they're okay with him being back on the touchline, then okay, that's where they're at. But they did the right thing, absolutely, in relinquishing the hosting rights. I'm, I'm glad they did that. Yep. The final four are Phoenix, El Paso, Loose City, and Tampa Bay this weekend. Um, Tampa and Louisville is going to be a fun match. That's going to be a good one. Um, El Paso and Phoenix will be good. Both of these are good matches, but I think Tampa Bay Louisville will be a an absolute slugfest. I really like the Rowdies. I had a chance to see them a bunch this year, so I'm probably a little biased here, but I really like what Tampa Bay's done. So um, I'm picking Tampa Bay to go all the way. And we will catch up with uh, Mike Kelleher for our last uh, regularly scheduled Charleston Battery Weekly to recap the season. That'll be out this weekend. All right. Anything else on Twitter? Uh, Michael Head just wanted to know if this was now U12 refing down here. Yes, it has turned into that. Um, you got to card the kid somehow. I mean, if if you don't want to send him off, I get it, but he can't play yeah. after that. I mean, you got to make sure that it's understood. This is not going to be okay once you move up levels. Um, Twitch pitch, finishing up. Pacine tries to explain himself, talking about the uh, the Bells Darby. Okay. Uh, because we are the business hubs in the South, Southern Bells. I'm taking my ball and going home now. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> hey, if it if it clicks, it clicks. You're yeah. putting it out there. Go for it. I'm I am not uh, jumping into that at all. Yeah, I uh, have no ideas, so I'm all for ideas. 
No, leave that one alone. Burned, I uh, love the NWSL games on TV all year, but the last few weeks it became obvious the level had dropped sharply, in particular when they had Orlando on. Hopefully they can get their good players back from the Women's Super League for next season. Yeah, I mean, two things. The, the competition, the tournament was great. There were things on the line. The games were competitive. Enjoyed all of it. The fall series, I honestly did not get into it because there was nothing on the line. It was just showcase games. They didn't mean yep. anything, so I had no interest. Um, but I'm also somebody who doesn't really have a lot of interest in friendlies in general. You know, when you have the international break and it's all friendlies, I don't really care. Uh, I don't really care about the summer club friendlies. Like I just, I don't get into that. I, I want competition. So I, I did not get into it. I do agree that the level dropped the times I peeked in on it, uh, which is expected when a lot of your best players are not there at this point. So that's definitely got to change. But I'm glad the ratings were all right. Uh, I'm glad they were better than I thought they might be for games that didn't matter. Um, Colonel said, uh, brought sweet potatoes in from the garden while listening today. Ten and a half pounds. We won't start. Wow. That's a lot of sweet potatoes, Colonel. I don't have actually... No, I might have that many sweet potatoes. Um, Ashley's dad uh, was growing sweet potatoes and had a bunch this year. So we have a bunch of sweet potatoes. Um, might have to make some sweet potatoes tonight, actually, now that I think about it. Really might have to get into that. You have fun. Yeah. Mizano says, uh, for the rivalry name, uh, El Trafico del Sur, since both cities have terrible traffic problems. People will get angry and fight each other. Uh, <laughs> burned La Reina del Sur. <laughs> or, or will that get me blocked in the cartel connotation? It might. Um, everybody's jumping on the Royal Rumble, which would be fun. Uh, you may, might need to get Ric Flair involved. Um, oh, get the WWE resident of both cities. Oh, see, there you go. John's getting all excited. Um, there is a high-speed train between Atlanta and Charlotte, or there's talk about one. Or is there one, Ricky? I'm, I'm checking the link right now. If there is, I didn't know. Um, I think there's talk about it. You sent me to a uh, U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Railroad Administration, environmental impact statement. That's way too much for me right now. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, high-speed trains are fun. Um, Deep South Derby. Tesco could live with that. Okay. We'll see what happens. Uh, Pacine says, I'm like the antithesis of a hipster. No, you weren't the hipster one. It, it was the... Uh, it was my hatred for the Louisville Indy name and and the other just uh, no I, no the the Bell one's not a hipster thing at all. Uh, it was a joke for Steve. Um, good times. The Deep South's youngest rivalry from Ricky. There you go. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, like okay. Cool. J Dub tweeted the new version of the bald team to us so we can use it for tomorrow. Um, if John doesn't forget. I might have to write it on my board when we finish. Oh, yeah, like I said, I've got I've got eight of eleven right now on my list. Okay, fair enough. Um, the sweet tea derby—that's what Chris Ashley's pushing for. Not against it. I'm sorry, Alex. It's okay. It's okay. You don't have to have a broken heart about it. It's all good. Um, it's all good. We'll be okay. Even though the name, I don't think clicked. It's okay. It's up to you guys. I don't have any say in this. I just I'm just throwing names out there. If I don't yeah. like something, that doesn't mean it matters. There's plenty of things I don't like that are popular. Anything else on the dry erase board over your left shoulder? Uh, let's see. We talked about Cristiano Ronaldo and his positive COVID test, but he has a low viral load, so uh, maybe he'll find a way to play. We talked about Javier Aguirre and his interest in Major League Soccer. We talked about Ecuador and El Mataflo still at home celebrating. He did not join us today. Uh, we talked about Zizou and the hot seat that could be forming in... Madrid, and we've talked a lot about MLS, and we're going to talk more about MLS on stoppage time at 2 o'clock. Facebook.com slash 929thegame. Uh, you can send in your questions for Mike and I there. Uh, we'll get deep into Atlanta and D.C., players to watch, things to watch in that. The landscape of the games this weekend, uh, we'll be back with you before the games on Wednesday, so we'll just be looking at the games between now and then, and what they all mean for Atlanta's playoff race and probably just the, the playoff race in general in MLS. So that's at 2 o'clock. Trivia tonight at 7. All you got to do is make a donation to Soccer in the Streets. Whatever donation you can make, make it because every single dollar helps. 
um, and come play some trivia tonight and, and see how you do. Uh, we've had two different winners of trivia in the three times we've done it. Um, we had some new faces on the leaderboard last time around, so these things are always good. Lots of different kinds of questions. It's all multiple choice, so any of you can beat John in multiple choice. You can do this. Um, please do, so we can talk about it tomorrow, because it'll be good yeah, times. Yeah, of course. That's the best way to do it. Yes, and we'll be back in the morning, and it'll be a uh, Friday morning preview with Doug Robertson, with Mike coming back again to uh, preview the match on Saturday. So lots of things coming up. Hopefully you can join us for some of them. Thanks for hanging out today. Mucha plata, y'all. Mucha plata, y'all.